What's up, everybody? It's me, Alan. I am back with another live stream. I apologize. Bobby's not here yet. Um, you know, this is really his first time using something like StreamYard, so I'm waiting to hear back from him. I already sent him the invite link, so when he gets here, we'll be able to uh, properly uh, commence things. As I say that, there he is. <laughs> so allow me... To, to introduce to y'all, my friend, the current ring announcer for ICW NHP, your esteemed ring announcer for ETU Wrestling's Unlock the Unexpected event on April 6th, and I guess you call him the mouthpiece of Cruel in some respects, he'll probably correct me on that, but I'm calling him that anyway, my man, Bobby Mother. Fucking Banks. What's up, man? How you doing? I can't hear you. No worries, man. I get it. <laughs> Oof. All right, no, so you're not muted on StreamYard. I it's I think it's your computer. Because if you were muted on here, it would tell me. No worries, guys. Technical difficulties. It happens. Believe, believe me, I've already told him. If my laptop freezes, like like y'all have seen happen before on previous streams, he's got to hold it down for a few before when I get back. <laughs> so we've already discussed that. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um. Knock on wood. <laughs> can you hear uh, me? Nope. Still can't hear you. Still nothing. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. Okay. I heard. Okay. Now I hear you. Now I hear you. Now I hear you. I heard you for like a minute. How about now? There we go. There he Mike is. Mic check one, two. Yes, sir. Yep. There it is. Is it working now? All right. So. Bobby, it's a pleasure to have you on here. It's it's an honor. It really is. Um, you know, I, I'm excited. I, I You can hear it. I'm quite excited. I've been excited for this. Though how much of that excitement is still riding off the high of holding the X Division title and, and meeting with Staff Ali last night at Fight Life? I don't know. But still very excited. Um, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, since, yeah, really, I've been looking forward to this since I asked you about it. Literally the day after the day I came home from Rustable, uh, back in you know, back on like what New Year's Day, excuse me, sorry, when I came home on New Year's Day, because this is something that after meeting you back then, I wanted to do, and then after getting to see you again uh, about a week or so ago at ICW, um, I'm I kind of reignited the idea to do it, and so happy to have you here, man. So go ahead, you know, I already sort of kind of intro to you a little bit um but tell the people who you are where you're from all that fun stuff and uh we'll get into it yeah well uh i am the man the myth the legend yours truly bobby fucking banks um and as always it is a great day to be alive uh thank you for right. having me on uh you mentioned worcester i had such a great time at the whole restival thing that was a lot of fun uh, it really and, was, yeah. I mean, it was my obviously because I've only been into wrestling, and see, that's that's the biggest thing is like I've only been in wrestling since about 2021, 2022 ish, and I've only been going to shows since last year. So, well, okay, sorry, since SmackDown in Worcester in 2022, Indies since last year. So you you've been in the game for a way longer than I have. Um, so but either way, it was an incredible experience. So yeah. Yeah, I, I, ha I haven't been watching wrestling for a long time, uh, but haven't been as involved in independent wrestling until just recently, actually. It, it's only been sort of the last uh, year or so that I've been getting really, you know, really into the, the indie scene and, right, yeah. uh, and all the stuff that's going on. Yeah, and it's crazy because, like, a lot of people love you, dude. Like, it's like, when ETU announced 
you were re-announcing for them for Unlock the Unexpected on April 6th. Like, just the amount of people quote tweeting that and just and shouting you out and and all of that is just that's crazy. It, it really is. It, it's it, I, I would say it's a surreal feeling for for you, especially for you. Absolutely. I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Well, I love working with ETU. In my opinion, the best uh, independent wrestling company on the map right now, like the struggles, Ryan Huber fucking genius man he's a genius he's a creative genius um and he's great to work with too i love working with him yeah. i'm really looking forward to the this 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 show is going to be pretty special you know coming up oh yeah absolutely i mean it's it, it's stacked it's etu versus dragon gate i i mean and, and that's and it's wild because when you think about it, because we're all we're we're literally less than two weeks away from WrestleMania and the, the collective with GCW and all these other massive events that are going on. Hell, I just freaking saw on Twitter a little while ago. Remarkable Wrestling's got an event coming up, Chamber of Horrors or something like that. So they're going to do their own elimination chamber, like how chamber freaking Horror's GCW is doing their own Punjabi prison. For a four-way tag title match, like oh man, I'll never forget what when, the uh, fuck. I believe it was like, the, dude. That's Steiner. insane. That the is Steiner legit insane. There with, uh, uh, Abdullah the Butcher and yeah, uh, got the the belly to belly suplex into the electric chair. And that was the Shit. Chamber of Heart. Yeah, that was back oh, in the day. I'm, I'm really old. I'm I'm extremely old, ancient. <laughs> So oh, uh, I was on. around. I was around in like the the 90s when uh Ultimo Dragon was was wrestling on Monday Nitro. Um, yeah. and, and just to have the opportunity to uh you know a- announce him and uh Danny DeMonto uh at ETU coming up. It's pretty special yeah. for me just cuz I you know I remember seeing him on, on Nitro as a kid growing up. Yeah, and and that's the thing that I always talk about is like Whenever I, I talk about how I first got into wrestling, it was Chiseled Adonis, who's another YouTuber. Oh, well, actually, it's a couple of YouTubers. Chiseled Adonis and his WWE reactions, and then wrestling bios, and watching his, and sort of getting into some of his like, singular form videos, but also the Reliving the War series, WCW versus WWE, and wa- and watching him review these, show, review these shows against each other, and... And learning about a lot of these talents. So Ultimate Dragon's a guy that's popped up a lot with WCW. So to see that he's gonna be there, um, and and all this other stuff, that's it's wild because when you think about it, how some some guys are still going that have been going for forever. I mean, people brought it you know, just got brought up again recently. Miku Satamora, she's been she she wrestled back in the WCW days. And now I think like she's still technically signed with WWE, but I believe she's been back home in Japan with like her own uh, training school and stuff. So it's just wild. And dude, I'm proud of you. I'm like being at ICW and HB 60. Y'all got to understand they had Rich Palladino, who's a fucking legend in his own right. He's been at this announcing game for God knows how long. When he announced right before the main event, that you would become the new official ring announcer for ICW and passing that mic off to you. That's a literal, that's a passing of the torch sort of moment, in my mm. opinion. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, and when you got done doing that and went back to your seat, I went over to you and I'm like, dude, I'm fucking proud of you, man. Like, I, Oh my God! Now, Rich Paladino is an actual legend, and uh, still hey, one don't of the sell best in the short, world. Right? Say Come what? On. I said, don't sell yourself short, man. Well, he he <laughs> really is. Like he's been doing it thirty years or more, and and uh, yeah. still one of the best in the world at it. I love watching Rich. Uh, I love the way you know we, we we just talked about WCW. I I was a WCW kid growing up. Uh, watched a lot of it back in the day, and earlier earlier on, there was a guy. Uh, his name was Gary Michael Capetta, and Rich reminds me a lot of of him uh, from back in the WCW days. Um, I'm really I'm really happy to see Rich get uh, 
a bigger platform too with uh, the MLW situation. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, but, yeah, that just him. I mean, he literally tweeted about it. He wasn't supposed to be at Fight Life last night, but then he got called in and asked, "Hey, can you do commentary?" He'd be like, sure. So he so he showed up. He was there, and that was that was really cool. Um, yeah, I love, I, Rich. I love Rich. Rich is a great guy. Oh yeah, absolutely. It and it's 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 crazy, and um, you know, and then you know, he was away for a little bit for wrestling open. You know, he took a vacation earlier this year, and they had uh, one of the students from uh, BioPro doing it. And I could see something where down the line, Rich sort of passes that torch on to her. Uh, I can't, I don't know her name off the top of my head, but I could see a passing of the torch thing there as well someday. But I think as wrong as Rich has got the energy to do it, he's just going to keep doing it. And it's the same thing for you. Like, I know you're, you know, you've done it sometimes and that, you know, and you're, I think you're starting to get into it more consistently. Um, it's just a thing where, you know, if you've got the passion and you've got the energy to do it, then you just, you keep going as long as you can. And, you know, there's no stopping you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I have to doing it. There's um, sometimes I'll say something like there is nowhere I would rather be than right here with you. Uh, and when I am in the ring um, announcing shows, that is 100 percent true. There is nowhere I'd rather be. Exactly. Uh, I agree with you, man. I agree. So much fun. Man. There's I, I've, I've also been really fortunate to be involved with great promotions like ICW, No Holds Barred and ETU. The, yeah. the thing that makes ICW and ETU both really great is the people. The people involved uh, are really good people, and they, they, they love uh, me, and they love other people. And, and it's nothing but love when you're around them. Uh, and yeah. that's not something that you can get always in, like, everyday life and stuff. So oh, definitely, I always yeah. worth absolutely. doing that. But it's because of the people. Yeah. I agree with you there. It, it's like after Fight Life, I I got to have a conversation in front of with um the former Ellis Sailor. He goes by Pat Dynamite now, but I I I got a picture with him, picture with him and Try Tiger. They're you know parts of YD and of Young Dumb and Broke. Um, after the show, and I was talking to Pat just about a lot of real life shit. And the biggest thing with wrestling for me is like when I went to that SmackDown show in Worcester. Uh, the the SmackDown season premiere, quote unquote. I was it was originally a twenty first birthday gift from me to me. I you know it was right it was like the weekend after, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going. Why not? I had just got my car less than two months ago, and my mom was like, well, you've also you've never been to Worcester. You just got your car. And at first, I'm just like, Ugh. you know, it's mom being mom. But then I'm like, all right, fine, you're right. Hey, Dad, you want to go? And he'd never been to a wrestling show either. But what he had told me was him and his dad back in the day, they'd watch a lot of you know wrestling on you know the TV and stuff like that back in his day. So um and he always he told me, you know, if you ever want to do this again, we could. And and we've done that a few times. And um there there are some events that are coming up that I may end up taking him to, though we'll see. Um, you know, trying to save some money towards a couple of trips later in the year. Uh, but you know, just talking wrestling and, and dad will, you know, I'll be over at my dad sometimes and he'll pull up one of the apps he has on his phone. It's either Snapchat or, or some other, or TikTok or some other thing. And, you know, he'll have wrestling stuff pop up and he'll just show it to me. And it's just, it's kind of, it's just wild. Um, you know, and there's a couple Sundays ago, I was over at his house and we were watching 80 because they, they'll do wrestling documentary stuff on A&E. So we were watching a bunch of that before one of the new episodes came on for that week uh, and just talking to him about that and what he knew. And it's, it's nice because I grew up not always, you know, being the greatest, you know, I, I didn't always understand why my dad raised me the way he did and, and some other stuff. And I never, I didn't always like it, but I've grown up to understand it. And I feel like him and I have gotten closer in recent years um, I, I just think, honestly, having moving out after graduating high school probably helped in that regard. Sometimes you have to grow away from somebody to then get back to them. Um, and it, the biggest thing for me is just 
I want to do as much as I can with him while I have him. And it's what I always say these days, especially after losing my grandmother, his mom, a couple years ago. Do what you can with your family while you have them, because you never know how much how long you've got until they're gone. Um, so, yeah, and I'm and I'm sure you know the same thing. You know, it's definitely do. just one of those things. Yeah. So anyway, let's, let's talk about the time uh, that I that I met you, like back in the <laughs> yeah back at the rest. Yeah, let's get into I, that a little bit. So yeah. Rest of all 2023. Oh my god. It's still it's it's so much fun to look back on. It really is. Um I laugh when I think about it sometimes. And because so so the way for those of you that don't know what Restival is that come across this live stream. What Rustival is, is essentially it's beyond wrestling having this big, it's sort of, Matthew, we will get to your question momentarily. Uh, thank you for chatting. I appreciate that. Um, but real quick, Rustival, what it is, is it it's kind of like what you're seeing right now with GCW's collective, where you have a bunch of different promotions getting together, working with GCW or doing their own standalone shows. Uh, as part of this whole collective, it's it's part of this whole group thing. So Restival is kind of the same way, where you have Beyond Wrestling, you know, you have a bunch of different promotions. A lot of them are New England based, but you got you had some that came up from like Carolinas, New Jersey. Um, I know ETU came up, I believe. Um, and I think I think ICW came up as well. I'm not sure. Uh, and some other ones too. And so and. So they had uh, Remarkable Wrestling as a free show and then Wrestling Open on Thursday because it's Wrestling Open every Thursday forever. Um, then you had, and then it was, I believe, then it was three shows the next, th well, technically two shows one of the next three days because one of them was a double header for a promotion and then the other two was three shows a day. So Sunday... The second show of the day was Blitzkrieg Pro, which was the first indie I ever went to. Uh, shout out Kirby Wackerman. I, I will forever tell that story, uh, which is a separate one. But one of the matches that happened was Sammy Diaz versus Kevin Blackwood. And I actually sponsored Sammy for that show. It was the first time I'd sponsored anyone. And what happened was I got so goddamn loud. For Sammy, and and it was fun bantering back and forth with other fans and and the chants and all this other stuff. And I checked Twitter after in between matches and stuff, and I'm and I checked the hashtag for the show or for Russell or whatever, and I find you asking who the hell it was that was screaming so goddamn because <laughs> I had someone tell tell me. That they could hear me over freaking production or something, and which was oh, it was ins it was insane. Uh, I, yeah, it I'd was. never I'd never seen anything like it before. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate. Like, who, that. who is um, that kid? I got I've got to meet that kid over there that's screaming louder than the production. I still haven't. I I've been meaning to watch the match back just so I could hear how. I would assume it's edited, but I I need to go back and watch and see it because oh my god, <clears throat> like but that I, blew I my mind so much. Like I, it was really cool. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of wrestling fans. I think we need yeah. like we need more really good fans in wrestling. Fans have a very important role to play in the whole uh, the whole show. You know, yeah. We need we need more really good fans and. I don't know that I've ever met someone who who can scream as loud, who is as, as excited as this kid right here, Alan, and just about blew the roof off the place of the White Eagle uh, by his damn self, screaming for Sammy Diaz. Fucking Christ. Hey, yeah. coming from you, that means a lot. And, and it's like, I, and I've gotten, I will get loud. Oh, plenty of times, 
Sometimes I get louder than usual, depending on who it is. Like it's an match. If it's if it's somebody I really like. So for example, um back at Beyond Wrestling's um oh fuck, what the hell is it called? Um it, it was their it's their big summer show that they do. Um anyway, so they had well, the second match of the night was Richard Holiday back when, you know, he was majority of face and not aligned with Paro and Charles Mason, or like he is in GCW and as a heel, but anyway. It was him against Brad Hollister, and if anybody knows, Hollister is a guy that, when it comes to wrestling open and beyond wrestling, he's one, he is you either love him, or you hate him. You either cheer for him if you're a fan of him in big business, or you boo the shit out of him. And I booed the shit out of him, and I cheered hard for Holiday, so much so that my buddy Dave had to get me a water, so I didn't pass the fuck out. <laughs> um, and then, like, you know, if it's an Alec Price match, oh, believe, like, aside from him facing Sammy Diaz in a tag match last night at Fight Life, because, damn it, why you gotta put faves against each other, for me. But, um, like, Alec, when he faced Tremont, that, oh, Americana, that's what it was. My bad, I just remembered it. Uh, when, when Alec faced Tremont, uh, that night in the main for the I for the IWTV title, and then you know I cheered hard for Alec when he faced Cruel at Heavy Lies the Crown. As Bobby would know, I cheered hard for Alec, and then he lost, and then I fucking cried because I I wasn't I wasn't expecting Alec to lose. Like, and, and then that that, that, that made me cry because when you cried, it made me cry, and we were all crying. Yeah, together. yeah, but for two completely different reasons. But no, I, I know, tried to and warn you, Alan. And, I tried, I tried thing, to tell you about that situation that all would burn, and you did. You didn't want to listen, but I think now you hey know. Man. Hey, man. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. That's why I said. That's why I said when I introed you earlier. It's I. I don't know if by definition, because a lot of people will say that fans don't have gimmicks, and you're right, and they're right technically. But I would say I look at you and you're it's like you're like the mouthpiece of Cruel because Cruel doesn't like when Cruel is competing he doesn't talk he doesn't really I, at least I haven't heard him talk so you know I I look at you like that because you're probably the biggest Cruel fan that I know and you're it's like you're always associated with him you're around him a lot whenever you can be uh, that's kind of just how that's kind of how I look at it in some ways. Um, but like, it's not also not necessarily something to be taken seriously. Cause again, people, people stress that fans don't have gimmicks and I get that, but I'm just saying. Well, the one thing that I would say, <clears throat> Alan is don't let anybody ever tell you what a fan is. Oh yeah. Like, you know what a yeah. fan is. <laughs> Like people, people need to be watching you learning how to, how to be a fan. So, you know, whether that's, you know, having a gimmick or acting a fool or screaming as loud as you possibly can, just be you just have fun. That's what it's all about. Believe me, I agree. Get loud. It's, and like, yeah. I just, I wish there were more uh, folks like you out there just getting crazy. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I would think that, Probably back in the day, back like when you were growing up, and I don't mean I don't mean to say this to make you sound old, because as I yeah, always say, way you back, yeah, until you that's, hit your that's 90s. right. No, don't argue with me. You don't hit old until you hit your nineties. Damn it, I'm extremely old. Don't stop it. But um, I, I mean, you you could say like you look at a lot of footage from like the nineties and the early two thousands, and you see how a lot of how fans like it didn't matter what the hell was going on a lot of the time they would just be loud and rowdy and stuff and nowadays it, i think it's a lot more selective in some ways and i think that's just be, that maybe that's partly just how a lot of fans are conditioned especially because you know for the longest time wwe just was complete shit in what they were doing so i think it's a conditioning thing but it's also because i'm also still so new to wrestling, I still have so much to learn, and maybe in maybe in some ways I'm just easily impressionable. It might just be because of the ADHD and the autism. I don't know, but I, I genuinely I haven't had a bad experience at a show yet, and I always say I'm here for the vibes, and I'm here to have a great time, and just 
just when you're going to do something, just don't show up and just be freaking sitting on your hands the whole goddamn time. You know, just you know. I agree. Have fun. Exactly. And it, it's nice seeing other people have fun, but it's also crazy when I have people and, and it's either either it's fans or even wrestlers for that matter, you know, just come out to me, fist bump, you know, just like, you know, love the energy, you know, or they'll like or they'll like give me shit for like not being louder or whatever, you know, as a joke. And it's just like, what the fuck even is life, man? Like, like, again, it's insane. I mean. In less than a week, I got to meet freaking the Sandman, Shane Douglas. I had already seen Gangrel previously, so it was my second time seeing him. But I got to meet Shane Douglas, the Sandman, and I got to meet Mustafa Ali and hold the X Division title. The real thing. That I, I can't even begin to explain to you how much that means to me. Because, and I say it all the time, I grew up not having a lot of friends. Never really had them. Never really had an outlet to talk sports the way I do. And for as much of a cesspool as Twitter is, and we all understand that, Twitter has done so fucking much for me. And it is connecting me with people like you and so many others who otherwise I would have never talked, been able to talk to, never been able to meet, places I would never thought I would able to be able to go, things I never thought I'd be able to do. And it just keeps going. And it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Um, so now with all of that being said, and believe me, we got so much to talk about. I have I have a lot of things that my my brain, as always, is going a million miles a minute. But Matthew, I do want to address your question. It says, hey, Bobby, question, what was the most brutal ICW no holds barred match you ever saw in the 60 different editions that they've done, give or take? Mm. And thank you again, Matthew, for your question. That's a tough question. I was actually thinking, like, I, I uh, have not been, I, obviously I've not been to all of the I, ICW shows. Like, I only really started going to shows live um, around uh, Volume 43. Volume 43 was the first show that I went to live. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I did go to uh, one show uh that, that was long ago and, and I wasn't really uh, into it like back then, like I am now. Um, so I was, I was thinking about like, what's the most violent match that I've seen in person. Um, so this, I wouldn't take into consideration all the matches I've seen, like on IWTV. Um, there is oh, one yeah, that's though, sort of like a separate sort of question in a way, yeah. and we can get into that a little later if you want. Well, well let me answer Sorry. this. One. Let me, let, yeah, let me answer this one first. Like the the one, the there is one match that mm -hmm. that really does uh, stick out in my mind as being the most violent match that I have ever seen in person, and it. It might surprise you. I don't know. It was not the main event of the show, but uh, it was ICW IC, ICW No Holds Barred Volume Forty Nine, I believe it was. This was in uh, Red Bank, Tennessee, at the world famous TWE Arena. Um, and the match that I that uh, that sticks out in my mind as the most violent period that I've ever seen in my life in person. Any promotion. Uh, it was Bobby Beverly, the Bev, versus Doctor Redacted. Oh, and that that may surprise some folks because it, it wasn't the main event of that show, uh, and it you know Cruel wasn't you know in that match, but there was something about that. And, and I talked to Bobby Beverly a little bit about it, and he explained the whole. Bobby is a genius. Bobby Beverly, right. the Bev. And yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, it's always fuck Ohio uh, in, in this <laughs> house. But, but in, yeah. in, I, I really do appreciate the work of Bobby Beverly. He, he, yeah. he is a real artist, but he's also a genius. And he explained the whole concept of the violence to me and uh -huh. you know, what, what the difference between violence and ultra violence really is. And, right. He's got some. He's got some uh, pretty cool ideas. But that that match, it was something about the the amount and the velocity 
of the glass that was involved. Oh, shit. I encourage everybody who's watching this to go back. Uh, first off, you got to subscribe. It's only 10 bucks a month. Subscribe uh, to IWTV so you can go back and watch ICW No Holds Barred Volume 49. Um, and I was there. Uh, I was in the, uh, in the in the front row, I believe. Uh, Bobby Beverly uh, versus Dr. Redacted. Uh, to me, that sticks out in my mind as the most violent match I've ever seen in my life. Now, in terms of stuff that I have not seen in person that occurred earlier on, uh, I did. I was thinking about Cruel. Uh, early on, Cruel has some just really violent battles with the likes of uh, the Hoodfoot, Maurice Atlas, and uh, also Satu Jin um, back in the that day. Yeah, Satu's great. Um, shout out to uh, to the rejects. But uh, I would go back and take a look at some of that, that some of those early cruel matches. Right. Very brutal. Very bloody. Very violent. Um, well, I mean, most, yeah, I mean, one of ever seen big, person, a big Bobby so, Beverly you know. versus Doctor Redacted there in Red Bank, Tennessee, at the world famous TWE Arena, ICW No Holds Barred Volume Forty Nine. Nice. Yeah, I haven't met. I haven't had a chance to be Dr. Doc yet. I've heard of him, courtesy of another independent wrestler who I'm good friends with, uh, Perry Von Vicious. Um, I got to meet Bev once. That was <laughs> bring up America Rana again. That was at America Rana last year because that show they had to move some stuff around because there were some wrestlers that couldn't make it either due to, you know, for various reasons. And one of the matches, and they ended up changing one of the matches to where we got Ricky Shane Page. Bobby Beverly, and, ah, uh, fuck, I can't remember the third. Hold on. I have the picture in my binder. I I have it, I have it labeled, so I'll know, I'll know who it is once I look at it. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, it's the first one. It's the first one. Ah, okay. My bad. I don't have it. I just have them listed as 440. I don't have it actually listed on the picture, but, um, it was, uh, it was Kogar, Atticus uh, Kogar, Bev, and um, ah, I can't remember the third guy. It was them against RSP, Akira, and uh, Delirious. And um, that match, the end of that match was what led to um, the end of that match was what led to Atticus challenging RSP to the um, uh barbed wire uh match at um at heavy lies the crown later uh at the end of last year so i got to meet bev once um really cool but yeah i'll have to look that one up at some point there was another really um, brutal fight at the lot of the last uh pit fighter uh pfx 18 um mm -hmm. which was also in uh, Red Bank, Tennessee, at that world famous TWE arena with those media center chairs, uh, and and the media <laughs> center chairs were heavily involved in this particular altercation between, by God, Reed Bentley, and yeah. none other than Hardway Heater. And Heater, I believe, if, if I remember correctly, Heater got, I don't know if it was a pile driver or something, but he got. He got dropped on one of those uh, media center chairs and it split his head wide open. Are you shitting yeah. me? Oh, no. The gash in his head was about this big. Jesus um, fucking Christ. Hey, trust me on this one. I'm also a huge fan of, of hardware heaters, and but you don't want to fuck with Reed Bentley. He's crazy. Oh, I imagine. He's I crazy. Imagine. When he gets on that PCP, on those drugs... And get right, you know, yeah. it gets gets those uh, lights in his eyes, so to speak. You just want to stay away from the man. Reed Bentley is dangerous, um, mm -hmm. and he dem and he demonstrated that at PFX uh, eighteen, I believe it was. It was yeah, it was had to be eighteen because nineteen's coming up, and this was the last Pit Fighter show. Oh, um, I was gonna say because I know I've seen you on Twitter talking shit at somebody who broke one of those media center chairs. So, oh, you know. uh, let's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was a big misunderstanding between myself and uh, Mr. Brett Eisen. I just want to say, Brett, I love you. I cannot wait to see you. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna take that uh, bald head of yours. I'm just gonna kiss it. I love you, Brett. I love you. Uh, the pit bull, pit bull, Brett nice. Ison. Uh, yeah, that's that's an, you get hit once by him, you're done, donezo. Oh, okay. um, but that, that was actually Jameson Shook's fault that Brett broke, <laughs> Brett did. Yeah, you know, that's Brett, that, yeah, that's why I've been seeing you talking shit with. And and by the way, that's the that's that's and that's another thing that I mentioned with uh, with Pat, formerly known as Alice Taylor, last night when I was talking to him. When it comes to like social media and whatever, I have a lot of fun just talking shit with people, like you, especially, like you especially as well. But just talking shit with like with like wrestlers and stuff. Don't be afraid. I mean, obviously there there's a, a little bit of respect to it, but like don't be afraid to like talk shit right back because you know I can if I couldn't dish it if I couldn't take it I wouldn't dish it you know. But. Yeah. And that dives into its own argument of, well, what can you do and what can't you do and people being soft. And it's like you can talk shit without being a complete asshole to the point of like of invoking things that you shouldn't be invoking. You oh, know, yeah. it, the it's is, the is love. Is, you can is, be a it, heel it, without. You just got to do it in love it, and, and like you're make sure you're always having fun. If you if you can yeah. if you can make sure that everybody's having fun, then, you know, oh, you know it's all good. But uh, yeah, Brett Eisen, it wasn't his, it wasn't Mr. Eisen's fault. It was actually the fault of one Jameson Shook and and Shook. I am going to have a word with you when I see you uh, here here pretty soon. I'm coming back to, to Red Bank, to the world famous TWE arena. And we're going to have a conversation about the damage that you have done. Huh. To, to those media center chairs, uh, I believe it so far as just one that you're responsible for breaking, but those things are sacred in the world of professional wrestling. And we just can't have you uh, putting them in harm's way like you've done. And I know you're young, Jameson. Uh, if, if you're, if you're watching this, if you're out there, I know you're young. Uh, I know you are inexperienced and you, maybe you didn't know, maybe you didn't know about that, but I'm going to let you know. Okay. When I come to Red Bank, Tennessee, back to the world famous TWE arena, for uh, ICW No Holds Barred Volume 62 and Pit Fighter X 19, you're you're gonna learn something about those media center chairs. That's all I'm gonna say. God damn, bro. That that feels like a promo. Holy shit. Somebody gotta clip that. <laughs> it, it was it was a promo. Jameson, that was a promo. <laughs> and this is why I love you. This is just this is just I to go from just conversation to promo like that, that that's that's wild. That's wild to me. James oh. is gonna get his ass beat in Red Bank. No, he's not, gonna not get his ass beat. Not by me. I'm just gonna arrange the beating. But he'll know, he'll know when it comes who delivered it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I just, oh again, I just want to send so, love out there to Mr. Brett Ison. He is a, he's right. a, a long time friend of the family. Love you. Mm -hmm. Love you, Brett. Nice. So you were mentioning earlier about you grew up as a WCW Nitro guy. So I guess I got to ask, what was your first experience as far as like watching wrestling? How'd you get into it? Who got you into it? That sort of thing. I don't recall anyone getting me into it. Uh, I just I just started watching it as a kid, like on Sunday. Uh, when I uh, on Sunday, there was a, a show that WWE had, but then the the night before, it was uh, WCW Saturday uh, Saturday night, um, and I just I just started watching it as a kid and and loved it from from the very get go. You know, All right? So um, I actually just I. My apologies. I actually just saw this come up on my Twitter feed from ETU Wrestling. Again, Bobby Banks will be ring announcing for this show, and you get the honor of announcing that the Miracle Generation, Dustin, Flash, Waller, and Kylon King are putting the IWTV Tag Team Championships on the line against Gold Class. Oh, boy. That's that. Now... I don't know who Gold Class is. Again, I, I don't know nearly enough. I have so much learning to do. But what I do know is Miracle Generation is 
fucking awesome. Whether it's them against each other, wait, like they did last night at Fight Life, whether it's them against anybody, singles, tag, it don't fucking matter. Because what are you going to need when you face them? As Kyle and King would say, a goddamn miracle. Well, I forget uh, I mentioned that to you. Yeah, shout out to Kylon too. I, I I love that kid. He to me, he puts the miracle in miracle generation. Kylon King. I'm a big Kylon King fan. Yeah, um, I, I just I love miracle generation in general. It, they, yeah, they, me too. They're, they're they're just they're fucking incredible. Um, if you don't know about yeah. those gold class boys, you're gonna find out they're they're really really. Uh, Dragon Gate has some of the best wrestlers in the world. Uh, we've got yeah. some great talent coming over. Uh, from overseas, from uh, from around the world for that for that uh, show, and and that that particular match is one to watch. I, I feel like you know Miracle Generation is is always a threat to have the uh, the match the the best match of the card, the greatest the greatest match of the night. But with with those with those gold gold class boys involved, I mean that, that's going to be tough to beat. So you know, definitely right. definitely want to keep an eye out for that. Donald Holland, pleasure to see you here, buddy. Donald, um, Donnie, <laughs> Donald has become yeah. a really good. Don is a really good friend of mine who I have never in my life met. We've got to meet Donald. Yeah, so, that, and that's the thing. behind that's... that too, uh, Alan. I was supposed to go. I went to uh, Volume Fifty in uh -huh. Jersey. And then 51 was going to be in Detroit and Donald and I were going to get together and we were going to go to the uh, ICW show. And then we were going to go to the flop house show too, which I hate. I missed God. That's that is a, is a classic, but unfortunately uh -huh. I got COVID and that is the one oh, show. God, damn man. Damn. Yep. Since volume yeah. 43, that is the one ICW show. The, the only one that I have missed since volume 43 was uh, Volume 51 uh, there in Detroit. And it was a great show. Shout out to you, Donald. I love you. Can't wait to meet you. Uh, maybe think about coming down to Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the thing that should be noted. Um, as I said before, again, uh, Bobby is the ring announcer for ICW NHB. They've got, what is it, five events left? And then D ICW NHB and Danny DeMonto are taking some time away. That was announced back in Boston. Um, and I don't blame him. You know, that's, that's why, like, you look at Effie, for example, after he does Big Gay Brunch 9, at, you know, this weekend, or, you know, coming up at Mania Week, um, you know, he's taking a break, possibly, I don't want to say forever from doing that, but for now, because being a wrestler and also being a promoter, uh, and Don says the you guys, you'll make it happen, meet the two meeting, but, um, but like being a wrestler and also being a promoter, I imagine it takes a massive toll on you because you have so fucking much to do. You're 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 already paying for your own travel and all this other shit. And then you're also having to pay your excuse me. And then you have to manage the money to excuse me. Uh to pay talents and stuff like that. So I don't blame Danny or Effie for taking a break from doing from doing their respective shows. It, it I think it sounds more like Danny's taking a break from wrestling in general. Effie's obviously going to keep going. Um, but you know, I I shout out to the both of them because they're both fucking incredible people. Um, I've got to meet them both. Uh, Effie, I got to meet at GCW Hartford last fall. Danny, I obviously got to meet at ICW. Um, two incredible people. Uh, two awesome people, and um. I everybody says it and it's a sort of and it's but it's not a cliche thing. It's make the moments, take the fucking pictures, meet the people because you never know when you're gonna get to again. Um I know, have never and, met Effie and I need to. I've I've seen Effie a lot. Uh oh Effie Gibbs, I believe is uh is what they used to call him. I, I've seen him a lot, uh, but I've never actually met him because his line the Effie line at every show that Effie is on, it's always the longest line. And I, I just, I, you know, you got to have patience to yeah. stand in that Effie line. And I uh, just, yeah. I, I need, I need, to, I need to stand in it and I need to talk to Effie and, and finally meet Effie. But I you do, it. you really do. Like it's one of the most and, entertaining professional wrestlers in the history of professional wrestling. And I, I yeah. some people will say that's an exaggeration. It's not. 
He is. Yeah. Effie is incredibly talented. He really is. And the funniest thing is when I first when I first heard about him, it was for some stuff that like for some spot that he did a couple of years back. But like I remember talking to John Wolf about it. Uh, John Wolf, part of the uh, he has a podcast regarding GCW and and all of that. But I remember talking about it one day, and I was telling him how you know you look at where Effie was then and where he is now, and he's he's grown a lot since I think, and like he's accepted the fact that you know, and we won't necessarily discuss the spot here, but you can definitely say that at the time. You know, he grew from that and he learned from it and he's gotten better and better as a, you know, he's just an incredible human being. And it's always funny whenever people try to take shots at him on social media, like just randoms on Twitter trying to take shots at him. Because like, bruh, Effie's like, Effie's a fucking draw. He all, he is and he probably always will be. Um, you know, people want to see him. People want to learn from him. And uh, yeah. So. Um, I kind of want to get back to Matthew's question a little bit, j- just for my own sake. And I'll just say that when it comes, to, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of violent matches yet. Um, you know, I got to get uh, someday I got to get down to Jersey because it seems like that's where everything's legal down there. Um, I mean, I will say though, that the main event from ICW 60 or ICW NHB 60, Otis Kogar versus, uh, Matt Tremont for the American death match title. Holy fucking shit, man. I mean, first exposure to glass in a wrestling match for me. Uh, just the the violent... The, it's probably not necessarily the most violent match out there, but for a newbie like me, it kind of, it kind of was. <laughs> um, and just, it was, it was fucking wild. I mean, just seeing the blood squirting out of Otis's head at one point, just them just beating the shit out of each other, that's... That was nuts. And, uh, you know, as I as I said that night, OH, IO, all will burn. Now you know. <laughs> hey, everything is legal in Detroit. No athletic commission here. It always did crowds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 unfortunately. And the Detroit violence, it's different. It's, it's, uh, like they, I, I don't know what it is, Donald, about y'all up in up in Michigan or or wherever it is. Uh, that y'all y'all, are, I, I'm not sure that Michigan is a real place. It could be like a a figment of my imagination. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not I'm not sure that y'all get out enough because the violence that 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 you all uh always have up there. It's it's another level. You know, it's it's almost like y'all are shut ins. So you don't have other Sources of entertainment, and so you've got to Other really sources of turn entertainment? the dial up to the extreme there. <laughs> well, I mean, when it comes to other sources of entertainment, I mean, well, let's see here. The Lions are finally good again. The Tigers have not been great, haven't been great since, like, the early 2010s. The Pistons haven't been great since the mid-2000s. And then there's the Red Wings, which admittedly haven't been that great since their, their owner, Mike Illich, passed away. But... When you want to talk about Detroit Red Wings history, well, recently, literally this week, uh, you know, Darren McCarty, you know, the, I guess the, the manager of the Pillars, uh, MM3 and Tommy Vendetta, uh, he was on a radio show recently uh, discussing him, his fight with Claude Lemieux uh, back during the, the days of the Red Wings avalanche rivalry. And I was listening to that when it came up in my feed. And uh, I, I wish I wish McCarty would have. I, I know I asked McCarty on Twitter why he wasn't at uh, ICW and HB60. Um, he's got some stuff that's been going on, and so he, he was at home for that one. Um, I do hope I meet him sometime because, goddamn, just it's it's wild when people make that sort of crossover, you know. And um, and and seeing and for McCarty, you know, it that's that's wild. He's he's an NHL legend. One of one of the, I would say probably one of the greatest enforcers that the NHL has ever seen, and to now see him mentoring a couple of young wrestlers in Vendetta and MM3, I mean, hell, they just made their fucking GCW debut in Detroit recently against Cole Radrick and Alec Price, and that was a damn good match. Shout out Alec Price for that 
fucking stage dive he did. Jesus Christ. Fight night at the Joe, March 26, 1987, DMAC day. Yep. There it is. There it fucking is. <laughs> the old uh, Joe Lewis. Darren. Darren has become a friend of mine and uh uh what a what a just a phenomenal human being. Like you you put all this the sports stuff aside, all the accolades. Four time, four time Stanley four Cup time. champion. Can't yep. say that about too many folks in the history of the world. Yeah. But you put, you put all that aside. Darren McCarty is just a really good human being. Um, love, love him, love everything he does. And yeah. uh, can we talk just a minute? You you brought up you brought up the pillars. Um, yes. And I, I just want to I want to drop some truth on on Donald and 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 the world. Like when I first saw uh, Tommy Vendetta and Malcolm Monroe the Third, I was not convinced. Donald will tell you I was I was I was not convinced that they were that they they had it you know I was I was a little skeptical of them at first I guess you could say uh -huh. Uh -huh. they have proven themselves time and time again to the point that I'm a fan I'm a fan of theirs uh, yeah but but especially uh, Malcolm Reese just recently Malcolm has been really turning up the heat. Uh, on his stuff. And uh, we were over in England uh, for ICW No Holds Barred volumes 58 and 59. And Malcolm was phenomenal. Like, and it yeah. just really opened my eyes. I, I shouldn't have been sleeping on him. It was my fault. Like I, I, I really should have noticed before I did, but he is a fucking superstar. MM3. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And just wait, that was he's a superstar. Things. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that had to get changed with with ICW sixty was they were supposed to face uh, waves and curls, but Trayvon Jordan got. I th I think he was already he might have got. I don't know if it was he was kayfabe injured that became real or if he was already injured and it was a write off, but he he got injured after post match against the Kellys, and then I think from what I was told he re he wrestled like the next that weekend that Saturday, and then. It got worse, and then he got pulled. So he's been healing since. And then I think G his tag partner has sort of taken some time away, so that to kind of you know, so to wait until they can both come back. Um, but they ended, so what ended up happening was Vendetta ended up doing an open challenge, which he ended up facing Akira. That was that was that opened the show. That was fun. But then and then Malcolm Monroe the third ended up facing Marcus Mathers for the ET for the ETW or sorry ETU. Um, Damn it. Uh, Key to the East Championship. The Thank you. I was blanking on that for a second. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to screw it up, but um, him, M Mathers, and Monroe in that match, that was pretty fucking lit. Um, it was, it was, and Vendetta and Akira did really well as, as well. I was telling um, Ryan uh, the struggles the other day. Like, I, that, I mean, aside from, uh, so Marcus had a match with Cash Flow Ken Broadway, the, the, and that one sticks out for me as being my favorite defense of of uh his of of the etu key to the east championship um but aside from that one like aside from that match with ken the one that mal uh malcolm Monroe the third and he had at, at 60 was my favorite defense of my favorite title in professional wrestling uh i nice. call it the prettiest prize in all of professional wrestling um, it was just yeah. it was it was a really good matchup. I, I yeah. just want to say something about Tommy Vendetta really quickly if I can. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I learned something about Tommy when I was over mm -hmm. in in uh, the UK. He he's a heel. That Tommy Vendetta, uh, and over there they have different words for stuff. Like uh, the technical term for Tommy in the UK was he was a shit house, bell end. Wanka is what they called him. That's what they called him. They called him a shit house, bell end, Wanka. Now I don't, I don't know what all that means. I don't know what that is, but I just know it must be bad because he was a real asshole to those British folks over there. Well, Fuck yeah. you for that, Tommy. Yeah. So so Dottie here says MM3 trained by Truth Martini. His dad, Malcolm Monroe Jr., was a young boy for the original Sheik. 
His grandfather was Ma- Malcolm Rose Sr., who wrestled and owned Midwest Championship Wrestling. Damn. That man's got wrestling in his fucking veins. Holy shit. Yeah, and I just I just want to acknowledge that Donald was right. You know, I, like I like I mentioned, I slept on them a little bit. I slept on those Michigan boys a little bit. And Donald yeah. was trying to tell me long ago about how good they were and and about their their pedigree and and how how uh you know what superstars they would become. I didn't listen to Donald. I should have listened. Should have listened to Donald Holland. Uh because they sure are uh, superstars, both of them. Even that yeah. shithouse Bell and Wanka, Tommy Vendetta. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious! All right, so, um, so I guess I gotta ask, what the hell led you into becoming so associated? with cruel like when did that start and how did that become a thing for for you and him because it feels uh, like wherever cruel goes there's bobby banks is probably somewhere around the corner and if he's not he's watching from somewhere so go ahead well you know i get asked that question a lot and i always feel like i, I can't can't answer it uh well enough it it's really a question for cruel um, because f- from the moment I laid eyes on cruel, my whole, my entire soul, my, my whole being, my meaning for life was possessed. Um, and, and he, he became my personal Lord and savior and showed me uh, the fire. And once you look into that fire, you cannot look away and you understand the meaning of all will burn. Fair um, enough. Fair that, enough. I respect that. All of that sort of like it, it, it's hard to describe the experience, all, but but all of that sort of flashed directly into my soul. The first moment I ever saw Cruel, uh, Cruel possessed me, and I, I became obsessed with him. Um, yeah. The. The, the funny thing about that is, is it's it's not just ICW No Holds Barred where that's occurred. Uh, there's a great promotion. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at them. There's a great pr- promotion that I think is still based in North Carolina. I need you all to come on back. Uh, Deadlock Pro, DPW. They, they've been they're, doing they're, they're North Carolina based, but they're starting to get a little more, starting to branch out a little more. Yeah, like, and I need them to come on like back that. to my house uh, here, here in the Triangle region of North Carolina. Uh, but uh, you know, when Cruel comes out, Cruel for most folks is is an incredibly terrifying figure. There was a show that he did here in uh, Durham, and I, I actually had this shirt on, my Cruel shirt, <laughs> and. And uh, he was it, it was DPW here in Durham, uh, North Carolina. And again, people expect it's rational, I su- suppose, to be terrified of a nearly seven foot tall, inconceivable horror like cruel. It's called the uh, atrocity for a reason. I've never been afraid of him. I've never even been able to experience that fear because the. Mm-hmm. Uh, the possession, if you will, of my soul occurred from the moment I saw him. So in, instead of, you know, when, you, when you're afraid of somebody, when, when you experience fear, you want to run. That You get that fight or flight. I don't get that around Cruel uh, because yeah. he saved me from it. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that when, when I say that he is my personal Lord and Savior, he saved me from all that. I don't have yeah. to be afraid any, anymore. I know that all will burn. And, and you can see if you watch that DPW show, like I get right up in his face and I'm, I, I, I thought he needed my help. Like I thought I was going to have to jump the barrier and, and beat up the referee or something like that. I get um, that. But we had a little bit of a stare down at that DPW show. Uh, it was sort of a, a reconnecting of our souls. Uh, and well, I got to find that. Yeah, it, it's it's something to watch, but I struggle describing oh, that boy. because I don't think a whole lot of people are familiar with that that level of uh, having your soul possessed by by a supernatural being like Cruel. Uh, but he has yeah. definitely held a firm grip on my soul since the moment I saw him. That makes sense. 
And then Don here says, coming up at Combat One in Michigan, Cruel versus Vendetta, last man standing. <laughs> oh god. That might need to be a casket match because Vendetta gonna die. Well, uh Don Donald, you know, that is the one match that where you actually have a chance to beat Cruel because uh he he sometimes takes some he'll take he'll take some time to get back up. So if it's if it's just a 10 count, he might stay down. Colby Carino has beaten Cruel in a last in a last man standing match, but oh wow. Uh, let me tell you something. You want to make sure you're out of the entire arena by 10. If he does stay down for 10, because when he gets up, and he will, when he gets up, he is going to be very, very angry, and he is going to kill a motherfucker for that. Oh, I imagine. I imagine that, yeah. So, Tommy, um, I don't know I don't know why you signed on that dotted line, but <laughs> it may be your last signature. That's called signing your death warrant, sir. Um, but, you know, you talk about cool sort of possessing the soul, per se. In a little bit of a way, I sort of kind of feel the same way. when I Because when I first got into wrestling, the two people I latched on to first was Bray Wyatt, rest in peace, and uh, Alexa Bliss. And Bray, and I'm, I'm so fucking excited to watch the documentary that they're doing on him that's coming out April 1st on Peacock because I just, it, Bray, I, I'm going to be honest with you. If, if Bray could, was somehow, if somehow, some way Bray ended up going to like the Indies and he like, if he took some variation of the Fiend character, cause it would, cause it wouldn't have been the Fiend necessarily because WWE copyright. If he took something like that, just oh my god, Fiend versus Cruel. That just feels like something, just like the the just the the optics of that sort of match, especially in like a cinematic type setting. Kind of like you know, like so you take the Undertaker AJ Styles Boneyard match and you do something like that where it's like Fiend and Cruel. Lord almighty Jesus, somebody get me the fucking popcorn, because that's about to be some cinema right there, but uh, it's just, when Bray, when it, and it's so wild, because the night before Bray, the day before Bray died, was, well, I have it right here, as shit falls over, this guy, Terry Funk, the day before, had passed away, and I was at Fight Life that mm -hmm. night in Connecticut, we did. They did the ten bell salute and all that. But when Bray passed away, when that and when that news came out, there have been three times in my life where I have been shook straight to my soul by somebody passing away. Kobe Bryant, my grandmother on my dad's side, and Bray Wyatt. I fucking cried when Bray, when it came, when when Bray passed because. It's for a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, he's he's one of the most brilliant minds in wrestling. Um, sure, you could say he's not the greatest wrestler, but his storytelling, his character work, everything about him, you you were left wanting more. The way that he could reinvent himself over and over again. And it's just a shame that the guy that used to run WWE, whose name I won't mention, fucked him over multiple times because he just he just didn't get Bray. And, you know, and then it's just this last run. Freaking. I watched Extreme Rules on stream when Bray returned. And I, I damn near fucking cried when he returned. You know, it's. You just you have that connection with people, even if you've never met them or if you have met them. And I wish I could have someday met Bray and I hope to someday someday meet Alexa because. Yeah, it's, it's just. You know. So I, I, I can sort of see where that connection comes from in some ways, you know, again, you with cruel me with Bray and Alexa on the on the indies. 
if we're talking indie specific, I mean, come on. You've seen it with me with Alec, me with Sammy, you with a lot of people really, but especially them two. Um Alec is they're, they're just holy shit, dude. I yeah. I have nothing but good things to say for the both of them. Well, Cruel has um, Cruel has given me everything that I that I have. I mean, I Cruel just has this this way of uh controlling things. I don't fully understand how he does it. Um I don't need to fully understand. Uh but he has yeah. he has shown me incredible things. Uh things I never thought I would see, uh both in the here and now and uh things that have yet to come to pass that I know will will happen because he has shown me them. That's one of the coolest things that I've learned from Cruel is that time is an illusion. It's not real. I mean, if the pandemic taught us anything, it taught us that. Time is a lot like Michigan. It's it's just not it doesn't exist. <laughs> like other things, like other things do, you know? Yeah. Uh yeah, and yeah, so yeah. and cruel has the ability to sort of uh help people in a sense by removing the barrier of the perception of time and showing us the, the true nature of things which I can tell you from personal experience is fire. All will burn. All of it. I've seen it. Shut up, phone. Up in flames. Yeah. I imagine that's what Matt Tremont saw when Cool took him to hell and on all damn him, right. And, and emerge killdozer. And that damn right. Uh, I still that still blows my mind. It again, and I had a, I have to say it again. America Rana. Price beats Tremont for the title. And I had to, and I got told what had happened. Cruel got injured. Tremont somehow gets the got the belt somewhere along the way. That happens. And then just the visual. Tremont defending Price when Cruel stepped out from the back because he was on that same card. He had faced Sawyer Wreck that night. Um, Cruel comes out, he holds his title. All the law, like basically everybody from the locker room came out to just in case Cruel was going to do something. And you've got Tremont defending Price. Then next thing you know, October rolls around. IWTV does this big thing between Cruel and Tremont, which I haven't watched yet. I need to. Oh, you haven't watched and the then, death? The and death everybody's hall? saying yeah, Tremont? Tremont dies and all this, and it's, you know, this stuff. And then fucking, and then I think it was with, the, with H2O, out comes Killdozer. And it's like, what the fuck am I looking like? What the fuck happened? Oh yeah, that, don't that get me is wrong. The, the partnership between the two of them is me just lit. Just thinking about it, uh, chills. Yeah, really. I mean, it's that is wild. The... And then again, as we know, you know, then Tremont or sorry, Killdozer took on Matt Mikowski at Heavy Lights the Crown. Mikowski won that one. That I had actually. Now that I think about that, that that match was fucking brutal. That. That one might have been more brutal than somehow, some way, might have been slightly more brutal than Kildozer versus Kogar. I don't know why, but now that I'm thinking about it, just the amount of blood that was in that match and just all the things that Mikowski had to do to beat Kildozer was fucking insane. And then, yeah. you know, as we know, Price you know, Cruel got his title back after he, he beat Price. Well, that match is a good I, example of the extent to which Cruel does possess my soul. I was ready to fight Matt Mikowski. <laughs> I I was I was ready to go to war with a killer. Yeah, you're ready to go to war and get your fucking arm snapped. Right. In half. right. I would have been off immediately the fucking shoulder. Off right. the I would bone. have been immediately annihilated, destroyed, and assassinated. But I was ready to yep. do it. I was ready to do it because of the level, uh, the extent to which cruel was in possession of my soul matt fucked up that night by coming out two separate ways which he is not yeah, entitled yeah that was that was, he was not I entitled uh to, to to use that that music you know uh we did not okay that that was not that was not all right with with us uh and he well, did, you know what's did funny it anyway is, um, well sorry sorry to interrupt but you know what's funny is uh there's a clip that floats around the the internet wrestling me every now and again I think it was it was for N from NXT, WWE NXT that is where one half of Briggs and Jensen I forget which one it was I think came out to that song and everyone was like 
holy shit, he's coming out to Tremont's theme. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, I was so <laughs> mad. Yeah. I was level 10 angry. But um, <laughs> yeah. The, you, you, you also mentioned uh, the death of Matt Tremont. I just want to send, again, send condolences out to Chrissy and, and Matt's family. Uh, but, you know, that's what happens when you decide that you're going to become a bounty hunter, which is what Matt Tremont was at that time. Uh, Avery Good. Avery Good is, is why Matt Tremont is dead. Not cruel. Uh, Cruel was only defending himself. Uh, Avery Good sent Matt Tremont to get a job done that Tremont could not get done. And, uh, you know, Avery Good sent Tremont out to kill Cruel. You can't do that. Oh, and, shit. And, you know, and hold it's on. for that oh, reason oh, that Matt oh. Tremont had to die. Right. Okay. So I'm going to share this on my screen because we're talking about Cruel. And Warhorse just posted this promo from Cruel about oh. Cruel, as it says. So we're gonna oh, watch God. this real quick. Knock. I don't know because, if it came. because for a little bit of context, Warhorse, or at least the old Warhorse, went into Heavy Lies the Crown on New Year's Eve last year against Marcus Mathers. Winner is number one contender for the IWTV title. But if Warhorse lost, he was forced to retire. And that night. Excuse me. That night we saw a new war horse come out. So let's let's hear what he has to say real quick. And then Bobby, I'll ask you for your thoughts after. Power is a very interesting thing because when you have it to maintain power, you either need people to love you or you need people to fear you. One is significantly easier to get than the other. Fear can be spread like wildfire. Fear it's what a lot of people want. It's what someone like Cruel wants. It's what he thrives upon. And the Independent Wrestling Championship is how he does it. It's his motivation. He went through hell and back just to get that championship. Just to get that power, that control, that feeling that he can spread the fear that he wants. And without it, what is he? Without fear, what is cruel? Cruel is just flesh and blood like everybody else. What do you do when nobody fears you? Cruel? I don't fear you. I don't have the same emotions as everybody else. I stripped those away a long time ago. I don't fear you. I don't envy you. The only thing I want is total annihilation. I want that championship so nobody else can have it. I want to take the independent wrestling championship, tarnish its legacy, kill independent professional wrestling. So that way nobody has to fail like I do. I'm void of emotion. You, you have desire. You have wants, you have needs. You are more of a man than you let on. Me. Me. I'm a monster. Well, Bobby, as the mouthpiece of cruel, as I said before, what do you have to say to that? You look like you're stressing, so the floor is yours, my guy. Well, Let my, heart, my heart is pounding right now. I, I just got a piercing pain in my brain, uh, you know, right in my head. Uh, let me let me say let me say a few things about that, Jake. Whatever it is you want to call yourself, Warhorse, whatever it is, Jake, you will come to no fear. You will come to no fear. You claim to be emotionless. You claim to value nothing. They call you the nihilist. Wait until your life is on the line. Wait until that fire gets hot. And then we'll see. Then we'll see just how much emotion you have. 
at the end of the day, all will burn, even you. And I guarantee you, this will be the last thing you ever do. God damn. Couldn't have said it better myself. Fuck, man. I like Warhorse. Ow, my fucking neck. God damn it. I Who like the Warhorse. fuck does he think he is running his mealy little mouth about someone, something? He has no idea, no clue what, who Cruel is. Mm. He'll find and out, it's... though. We'll let him know. We'll teach oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it. Whenever and, that and shit... He will, and he will come to know what Matt Tremont knew at the moment of his passing. Oh, will burn mm -hmm. and i'm sure both you and i will be there when this match happens because Mora said he's willing to make everyone wait somebody will have but, to hold me back i mean uh yeah. had, you know jake kid i'm bigger than he is and, and, and you know he's got a really big mouth he wants to drop that elbow and run it too yeah but you know we're talking about a nearly seven foot tall nearly 300 pound monster death incarnate so uh yeah I, i'm really looking forward to that match i really am uh, I, yeah sam you know we're the title uh no one should be concerned about the title changing hands uh cruel is going to be the real world champion for as long as he wants to be and that very well might be forever get used to it jake you're never getting your hands on that title uh no matter what you want it for, what you say you want it for, you don't even need to think about that. The match is about your life. That was awesome. Uh, you know, and, and that's, it, it's wild to me. Like, I understand, I think, I understand Warhorse had to do this change. I'm, I'm I sorry, I gotta, I gotta take a break. I'm upset by that. I, I just need to get some water. I'll be back. Hey, do what you need to do, man. Do what you need to do. I got you, buddy. So we'll wait here for him to come back. But yeah, no, I mean, that's <laughs> I, I I had to the moment I saw that, I figured I'd share that. Cause I'm like, <laughs> um <laughs> Um Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who in the fuck he thinks he is. But like I said, he's going to find out who we are. Yeah, I, and, I don't doubt it. And when your life is on the line, Jake, you will come to no fear. Yep, I, I, I agree with you there, man. I'm disturbed. I'm disturbed by that whole video. Uh, you know, you can clearly see what a fake puppet of a man he is wearing that motorhead T-shirt, walking around with those weird looking sunglasses. That's not him. He's clearly not comfortable with who he is. You know, he's clearly well, afraid of who he is. Well, Much less who we are. You know, just just think about that. And, right. And and when when he is in when he is in the ring with us. I'm very upset. Right. No, I get it, man. You know, and as I, I was going to say, I think Warhorse. Ask Alec Price. He had to undergo a change. Ask he had to undergo Alec. a change in some ways. So Ask what? Alec Price. Right. What, what fear is all about. Well, I wanted to I set mean, him on fire. The only reason, the only reason that we didn't set him on fire is because I knew you were there, Alan. And I, I, you know, <laughs> I'd like to think that. I'd like to it's think true. that. Thank it's you. True. I, I, I had a I had a discussion with Cruel, um, and you know we were going to have Killdozer sit there with him uh, while we ran out of the building. We we're going to let Killdozer sit there with him uh, and hold him while he burned. That was, and we were going to burn down the White Eagle as well. And God. I said, I said, I said, Lord. Uh, there's this kid there, Alan. He loves Alec Price. Don't, don't mutilate him. You know, just, just beat him, defeat him, take those titles from him, 
but don't don't mutilate him. Don't maim him. Don't kill him. Let Alec live for Alan because Alan loves him so much. And that's that's exactly what happened. You can watch the tape back on that. Oh, oh hey, I was there. I, I watched it happen. You know, I mean, like I said, it, I felt the way I felt. And maybe that's in some ways why I'm so, as much as it didn't make sense. I'm kind of glad the rematch maybe didn't happen in Boston because, you know, it, hey, it's another day, another day. But back to Warhorse for a little bit. I do want to say I when you look at what he has become compared to what he was, I, I, I think a change was necessary because, you know, you look at this descent into what he has become. A lot of it was based on the fact that when he used to be IWTV champion, and then when he lost the belt, he never got another shot at it. Oh, poor thing! Know? And as he talk, he talks about often about how he carried he carried that title through the pandemic and whatnot, and he traveled everywhere and defended it everywhere. And, and you look at where it is now, where you know where everything is now, and it's. I think there may be some that didn't that didn't know him all too well that probably would have looked at Warhorse and be like, oh, he's just like a Randy Savage ripoff, just with with the Slim Jim and all this other stuff. And I don't see it that way. I see I Warhorse is fucking phenomenal. But I think he felt he had to undergo a change. And now it seems like based off that promo, he's setting his sights on a on going after Cruel Soon. We don't respect I him. very well. We don't I have could very well that, see that. As like the main event of America Rana this year, much like how Price versus Tremont was the main event last year. That could no, be a we, summertime we, thing. We don't respect but. him. We don't respect him like we did Matt Tremont. And look what we did to Matt. Yeah. So if that is then yeah, you're right. So it's like you look at what Tremont Tremont became Killdozer. Well, Warhorse, you know, if you have the respect for Tremont, and if you don't have the respect for Warhorse, then what the fuck is Cool going to do to him? Well, Jake, if you're watching this, I, I'm I'm really I'm really glad though. I'm I'm really glad that you have found yourself in the line of this fire. You know, you you talked about how you've needed to make some changes. We'll make some changes. I'm sorry, Warhorse. So I I quote tweeted his post. He just retweeted it. Good. 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 Uh I I I can't handle this. You know, I just I I cannot wait until we get our hands on that fake plastic bitch ass punk, Jake Parnell. <laughs> Shots fucking fired. Bobby yeah. Banks, everybody. Uh this I, I fucking love you, dude. This is this is what I mean when it comes to fandom. Like, you don't have to be like one of these like stan accounts on social media that like the like they defend someone to these unhealthy levels and any criticism that gets directed towards that favorite, they're just like, you know, like, like if that if that person like outside of the ring did some fucked up shit that like mm -hmm. or whatever. But no, but like healthy fandom is supporting someone like you know, you would you would take a bullet for him. You would take. I think Bobby, you would take a bullet for Cruel if it came to be me. I would take a fucking it's bullet for Alex, me. Sammy, for a lot of these guys and gals. You know, it's not That's, up to me. Cruel, cruel. Uh, again, it's hard to explain to a lot of people because they don't understand. Like they, they don't they they haven't had the the same experiences that I've had with Cruel. It, it's 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 amazing being able to see the what what we perceive as the past, the present, and the future all in one, all at one time. Cruel has shown me that. I've seen everything that will ever happen to him, through him. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, there's, there's, there's just one thing, really, the fire. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm really upset about this this whole uh war horse situation uh, uh so as, think, as donald's I, putting it here war horse is made famous that by Gary anymore you know uh jake parnell or whoever he is you can book him at book of viking at yahoo.com you know that that is an that that is the email address 
of a scared little bitch. Right there. Book of Viking at yahoo.com. That's, that's yeah, the I think that, that's, that's an email that hasn't changed in some time. Yeah. But as send Donald him a message. says if here. You, if you've got enough money to, to get him on your show, send him a message uh, while you still can. Because when right. he comes when he comes into a confrontation with us, he will he he will come to no fear. And I can guarantee you that he'll lose the match. He might also lose his life. Right. But as, as Donald says here, Warhorse was made famous by Gary J. Now he's going to be made famous again by Cruel. Yeah. That about sums it up right there. That about sums it right the fuck up. You damn right. Um and Donald is always right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, oh boy, <clears throat> trying to think, um, so I guess outside of cruel and, and tree my, my proxy, just thinking about what we can do to him, ripping him limb from limb, maybe you know, tear his, tear his arms off and then beat him in the head with his arms, something like that. That's fucking Christ. <laughs> Oh my god. Um so I guess like outside of them, who like what I guess like what other wrestlers are you like big into? You know, like you know, <coughs> as a fan. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Alec Price's. Uh I think Alec is uh one of the best unsigned professional wrestlers in the world, if not the you best. God damn unsigned. right. Yeah, damn right. The uh, the thing that I love about Alec is that he can go into any building in the country and be anybody he wants to be. If he wants to go, I, I, I've, I've talked a little bit about the world-famous TWE Arena in Red Bank, Tennessee. If you haven't been to a TWE show, you got to go. If Alec wants to go down there and be uh, the hottest heel that they've ever seen, he can do that. But Alec, even though he is the Northeast beast, if he wants to come down south and get cheered, he can do that too. That's how talented Alec Price is. Um, I think he could be uh, the biggest heel if he wanted to be at the White Eagle in Worcester, where where they they love him to death. If he wanted them to boo, they'll they'll boo. That's that's how talented Alec Price is. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love um, Alec. Um, our champion, Marcus Mathers, uh, ETU Key to the East champion, Marcus Mathers, is another kid that I've been watching. He's incredibly talented. And the thing that I love about Marcus is that he keeps getting better. Uh, yep. just, just when he I just think I've seen it all. He just turned yep. fucking 21. Like. I, right. Just, and just when I think I've seen it all, he's got something new to show me. Uh, and I'm really excited yep. to see – what the evolution of our championship and the evolution of our champion will look like. Uh, well, it's definitely yeah. something, well, we something about that you want to stay I'm, tuned for. And I just yeah. got to mention one more name and then I'll shut up. Brandon <laughs> Kirk, the rogue. Uh, speaking of Marcus Mathers, uh, you know, Marcus has got a pretty big, pretty strong big brother in his corner right now. And Brandon Kirk protecting him from all comers. Um, and I think Brandon is incredibly talented at, at what he does in protecting right. our champion, but also just professional wrestling, generally speaking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what I was going to say was at Unlock the Unexpected, well, you have the honor of announcing him versus uh, Dragon Kid, I believe his name is. Um, so that should be a fucking heater. Um, yeah. And then Don you know, says here, and he he I asked him he in the chat he said he it said it auto corrected to Alex uh, instead of Alec, but he says Alec Tommy Vendetta Atticus Kogar, Jaden Newman, <clears throat> excuse me, and Marcus Mathers are his top five unsigned wrestlers. Donald was um, right about everything. Yeah, even well then he he does have you know Atticus on there, which I know from your experience it's always fuck Ohio for me I. I've had the honor of meeting Atticus and seeing him a couple of times in person. So I don't have necessarily have those same feelings, but Atticus you know, if, 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 it's something, if it's anything yeah. against Kroll, then eh, well, 
Attic Ogre is brilliant. He is he is uh, another one. Uh, I mentioned Alec Price's ability to go into any building and be anybody. Uh, Atticus is a little bit different than that, but he does have the ability to go to into any go into any building and control the emotions of the crowd. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like in professional wrestling, if you have that ability, no matter where you are, if you are able to go in there and control the crowd's emotions, then, you know, what, what more could you want? Uh, he's very talented in the ring, but it's really his ability to, to make me feel things that sets him apart yeah. from, from all the other ones. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've really I, felt I, some strong emotions hmm. uh, in the presence of Atticus Coger. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. Yeah. Um, I remember watching the promo that he dropped on Twitter ahead of facing Danny DeManto uh, late last year, that which led to Atticus not losing and doing the next six ICW dates, which I which ended it with the UK tour. I was one. I had wondered if he was going to be in Boston or not, wondering how that was going to work out because I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily keeping track, but. Um, it seemed like I remember watching that promo on Twitter, and I'm thinking to myself, "God damn, Atticus! Like, they, like he went in fucking hard, and it feels like he, as someone who doesn't know jack shit, like I, like I don't know jack shit. It felt to what I was hearing, I was thinking like, damn, he's going after some like real life shit. Like he is really freaking laying into Danny and be like, and trying, almost like he's invoking things that other people know." that like or that he knows like about danny like as a promoter or as a person or something like that um it was wild to me yeah just wild that. listening to that I, I just want to send a message again out uh to any promoters that might be watching this uh if you are interested in jake parnell you're going to want to book him soon uh book a viking at yahoo.com book him soon pay that fee because, you know, like Alan has talked about, you never know when someone that you care about may no longer be there for you. So go ahead and right. go ahead and hit him up at book of Viking at yahoo.com. Book him. Book the war horse because you may not be able to for much longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I could. I you could got me fired up, that. Alan. You've got me fired up. <laughs> hey it happens man it happens you know it just it was just convenient that that warhorse promo it, <clears throat> sorry it's like it's like warhorse sensed that something was going on like we somebody somewhere was talking about cruel and having a conversation it's like all right i'm gonna drop this now let's get some let's get us okay um, so, so don says the promo tape i'm assuming this is about atticus he dropped on the pillars is amazing. I don't think people are listening to what is said because it's all Detroit news stations talking about finding two dead bodies. Yeah, if you're referring to the Detroit Lions Stadium thing, apparently the Twitter account that put that out there, um, it's a it's all fake or whatever. Um, unless this is something completely different. But I know Atticus and Otis, I believe, are facing the pillars at um I believe at the next ICW show. They are. Uh, yep. In uh, uh, during Mania week, um, which is set to be wild. Uh, and speaking of that, you know, completely different. Okay. Completely different. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Um, I know Danny was supposed to face Mikey Whipwreck, but Whipwreck can't be there. So, but oh, he's teasing oh, the, whoever oh, oh. accepted the open challenge. And from mm, someone has accepted the challenge, Alan. All right, yeah, I I would imagine it's gonna be what Danny Danny, oh. from what I can tell, likes to go all out, and I think whoever does accept his challenge, it's gonna be no, it's I, gonna I, be. Something I'm telling else. you, someone has accepted that challenge. Yeah, yeah, because I know Danny tweeted about that. Um, yeah, y'all. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if there are any tickets left to that. But if you're not able to attend, you're definitely going to want to watch that one live. Oh, uh, uh, believe me, dude. It. If I could get down to fucking New Jersey or Philly or whatever, I fucking would. It's like I I like living up here because I can you know traveling to Mass and stuff, and then get down to Connecticut. The furthest south I've been has been New York uh, for a show last fall. 
which was literally because of one person that was supposed to be there, but then couldn't because of injuries. And I still went anyway. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it kind of makes me wish like I lived more in like the Connecticut area. Cause like, yeah, I could go North to mass. I could go South to New York or New Jersey. And hopefully it wouldn't be as long of a trip as it is coming from Southern New Hampshire. Um, in some respects, but yeah. Uh, Donald oh. mentioned someone. I just wanted to say a few words about my experiences with him. Uh, Jaden Newman, Jaden, mm -hmm. Uh, Jaden is another one that is incredibly talented, uh, but is getting even better. Uh, he's he's always been good in the ring ever since I uh, saw him at. Uh, there used to be a promotion here in North Carolina, uh, CWF Mid Atlantic, uh, and go up there to Gibsonville to the Gibsonville Sportatorium, and I saw Jaden Newman there for the first time, and I think 2016 or maybe it was a little bit before then, but. Jaden was good in the ring back then when he was, you know, really super duper young and he's still real young, but he's getting better. Like he, and just want to give a shout out to, to the Reverend Dan Wilson, Dan, I'm still terrified of you. I'm sorry about that little altercation. It was a big misunderstanding that we had uh, in Red Bank the last time I was there uh, and you threatened to wear my skin as your suit. And, uh, you know, just but I want to give a shout out to Dan. Dan, just keep a safe distance from me. But I love what you've done with Jaden Newman. The, the, the fire that we've seen from Jaden lately definitely has your signature all over it. Interesting. OK. Um, yeah. Uh, it's wild. It's, it's wild seeing a lot of the younger talents that are out there. Like just competing like all over the country, all over the world. I mean, Mathers, you, we were talking about Mathers earlier. He's set to go to Japan, uh, I believe, in May, or he's going somewhere overseas in May. I think it's Japan. Um, you have some other talents that are headed overseas in the next few months. And it, really, I feel like if you want to really like look at Jordan Oliver, for example, like he's been busting his ass over in Europe and he made a couple of trips back to the States for like GCW and stuff uh, over the last few months. But he's been busting his ass overseas, um, you know, honing his craft and stuff like that. And it feels like if you're if you're a younger talent, you gotta go. You in some, you know, I don't want to say you have to go overseas, but going overseas, I think it really introduces you to a whole different level of wrestling, and it does things to you, and it makes it forces you to be even better than you already are. Um, and, I, and so I guess I should ask, like, as Cruel, well, aside aside from the Europe thing, thing with ICW, like, has Cruel ever been outside of the States other than that? Any memorable matches outside of the States that you can think of, aside from the, the recent UK tour? Um, well, Cruel, Cruel is always everywhere and all at once. So it doesn't matter where you are, Cruel has been there and will always be there. You can't get away from him. Uh, that's that's one thing I always tell people is, uh, like, if you think you haven't seen Cruel, just look behind you. He's always right there. Um, oh, so that would mean he'd have to be in my walls. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's everywhere all at once. But uh, you, you mentioned the UK. Yeah, Cruel, Cruel's had some great overseas tours. Don't want, don't don't really like the airplanes that much, you know. For the big man, uh, we've had some issues with uh, air travel. Uh, yep, that kept in my head. If I had to call out a kryptonite for cruel, it would be those uh, flying metal cylinders uh, they call airplanes. Uh, so you yeah. know, we don't we don't always. He is a nearly seven foot tall, inconceivable horror. So we don't always like to sit in those uh flying coffins if, if you know what i mean so i guess he knows how alexa bliss feels dealing with airport bullshit yeah got that's that for those that don't know what i'm talking about um it's been well documented that alexa bliss has had just these ran most random like issues pop up with airlines and like bag issues or bags they broke in or whatever and it's just or like flights getting canned and it's like yes it happens to everybody but it feels like it happens to her it would happen to her a lot 
and other people that talk about it, and it's like, damn, so now you know how Lex was. As a fan, it's it's sort of a meme, but I, I get what you mean. It, it's I know that feeling. I had to sleep in a fucking airport back uh, when I was trying to f- when I was flying home from well from Denver via Wyoming last a uh, couple years ago because I was out with my dad seeing family out there and Southwest had to Southwest so yeah didn't get much oh, yeah. sleep. I can't stop watching. I've got I've got the the Twitter over here on the right hand side of my screen. I can't stop watching that war that war horse uh, promo video, and it's it's making me furious. Uh, I don't I, blame you, man. I get it. Uh, you know, I think, I think um, you might choke him a little bit, beat him some. He's uh, in the video. He's got a baseball bat. I hope he brings uh, all uh, his entire collection of bats to the ring. He'll need. Might have he'll to need, call up Sting for that. See what he's got left. Now he's retired. Now he's retired. <laughs> you don't need more than a bat. No, yeah, no. Probably need some metal pipes. And then that, that's another thing, you know. Being at Blitzkrieg Pro last Friday, you had Cruel and Bronson, uh, Bear Bronson, one half of AEW's Iron Savages, going at it. And that match ended up ending in double DQ because they both they both threw the ref because they went they went to. They both went for the choke slam on each other. Like they, they did the, you know, they grabbed each other the throat and stuff. And I think the ref tried to break it up. And then they just, the ref just got thrown. And, but then, and then Bronson called him out afterward. And like, for the next Blitzkrieg show, anything goes. And, uh, yeah, that should be, that should be fucking nuts. Cause Bronson himself, just imagine what the two of us could do with no rules. Um, I hope they have reinforced security and reinforced the walls because I'm pretty sure whatever building that's going to be in. <laughs> I'd like to. I'm surprised him. the four big poles in that mall didn't get fucking rammed through because they were throwing each other into them. I mean, hell, Perry Von Vichens went uh, back first in a one, and the little metal thing at the bottom, whatever it looked like, part of that fucking broke off. I don't know if it was already broken off like that beforehand, but I look over and I see him looking at it. I'm like, did I break that? But yeah, no. I'm looking forward to Cruel versus Bronson part two. That should be fun. Um, I'd like, I'd like but to then, But when he gets sent back to AEW in a body bag, well, y'all know why. Well, we, we respect Bronson. Uh, that makes him different than JP. I'd like to see yeah. uh, Jake get, get crucified, maybe, maybe like upside down. We could, you know, like oh an upside down cross, like like this type situation. Just think yeah. of the blood draining from the brain after it's been exposed to the oxygen in the air. Yeah, uh, gets that beautiful crimson color. Yeah, well, well, actually, Blitzkrieg Pro. So they return Friday, May tenth. They'll be in Enfield, Connecticut, back to the Old Country Banquet Hall. And on the tweet announcing that earlier. Both Cruel and Bronson are tagged in it. So I would imagine that's when the rematch is going to happen. Uh, which I'm, which I, those tickets go go on sale tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> we, 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 uh, we respect Bronson. Yeah, Bron- Bronson's awesome. And also his girl, Gabby Forza. Uh, we do not, we do not respect Goldberg. We do not acknowledge Goldberg, but we do acknowledge Gnomeberg, you know, gnomes. Um, she's fucking awesome. She so early into her career, and she is just fucking awesome. Oh, the um, legendary John Roy is in the comments. What's up, John? Yeah, okay, okay. So for the context of this, when fucking when Sandman came out, he's walking. Oh my god, I this is hilarious. So when Sammy came out, you know, people are chugging his beers and all that stuff. He walks up to me, he points his kendo stick towards Kirby, and he asked me who that guy was. And I was trying to say Kirby, and I think he thought I said it with a D, so he thought it was Derby. I, I was able to correct and say it was Kirby. <laughs> He's like, hi right, Bob, I was laughing so hard, you're on the street. <laughs> Hi, John. Oh, oh, so I'm on the broadcast for Blitzkrieg. Uh, that's fucking perfect. 
I gotta watch that back. But yeah, what? he's like, what's this guy's name? Kirby I'm McAvoy. All, you're you're on the screen cut, cutting a promo. No, no. Well, no. Like I said, well, it was. It was. Let, let, let me fix no, it. it. It was it, John. It wasn't a promo at all. It was the truth. Oh no! I think he's referring to me. I think he was referring to me from from Blitzkrieg. But either oh. way. Um. But yeah, no, that was a hilarious moment of the Sandman just trying asking me who Kirby was. And it's just like, what the f again, it's one of those what the fuck is life moments where it's just like, I have the literal Sandman talking to me right now. What? <laughs> but hi, John. Man. Pleasure to see you here. Yeah, Alan's on the Blitz stream. That's that dude. I gotta watch that back. That's lit, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, hell, what what I'm wondering is, it, did they catch me at the end? Because for where I was, I was sitting right next to the entrance way. So when the main event ended and six, because what happened was it was TJ Crawford, who's their current champion, against Ali Catch against Sammy Diaz. Sammy had Catch set up for the pin. TJ comes in, delivers a knee strike. Sammy gets yeeted out of the ring, and he steals the pin, the pin to retain the title. And Sammy's just sitting there, and I lean over and I look at him like, dude, you got robbed. You got fucking robbed. You know? And I, I've said, TJ versus Sammy, one on one for that fucking title. You know? Sammy will Sammy will get him. You know? I like you, TJ. Corner, I don't necessarily like one. with Brad Hollister and Big Business. I've said for quite a while now that I think that TJ is better than Brad. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, you should be in Sammy's corner for that match. Oh God! I mean, I'd love to, but I'm not taking a kick from TJ. Uh, I'm I'm good, thanks. I am gonna um, get on IWTV one day. John John Roy and I actually had a deal. I was gonna take over uh, crossing the streams after the untimely passing of Little Mean Kathleen. On LMK. Just didn't just didn't yeah. Out da exactly Danny was saying. Yeah, yeah. Danny was saying that. Danny said after that match, I believe that that's that, or I was on Twitter that that was that started out as like an inside joke that became a, the the match. LMK is like first time doing that type of thing. And hey, to be fair, she did a phenomenal job, and I think and Danny did a hell of a job protecting her and putting on that show with. That was a that from, was a damn. From what I could, from my vantage point, Alan, uh, it was Danny. Danny was the one that needed the protection from that that uh, crazy little mean Kathleen Dudley. I mean, um, LMK is a fucking pit bull. She's with fucking C she with Channing Thomas and Sydney Bacabella half the fucking time, and yeah. Jake Glitz too. Crowd surfing in Cambridge, Massachusetts. LMK. Yeah, that I got that a lot of respect. which. For her, yeah, and then and Danny was saying somebody pointed out on Twitter that like, oh, that's a that's a that's a that's a Bam Bam Bigelow spot, and Danny's like, thank you, that was my intention. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that 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 ICW show that was that was nuts. Like, like they again, they had to change it because some people got injured and and things got changed around, but in the end, it worked out. It sucks that Cole couldn't have been there. It sucks that Lifebook couldn't have been there. It sucks that Weezy and Curls couldn't have been there. But Danny did a phenomenal job with what he had to work with and who he had and who he was able to get. You know, getting Akira, Akira, Jesus fucking Christ, getting Akira, getting Gabe Sky. And speaking of Akira, how do you feel about him and going after the American Death Match uh, title with Killdozer? Because he had this <clears throat> match against this Lucha guy who I don't, I don't know who he is. He did a promo with him after the show that he did that with. And then he just did one uh, with Lefisto after a C4 show up in Canada recently, um, or or it might not have been there. It might have been it might have been a different show. My my apologies, but um, Akira, the Death Fighter, trying to go after uh, Killdozer for the title. What do you think? Oh, uh, you know, I, uh, that is a question I have not been asked by anyone yet, Alan. Uh, I've got a lot of got a lot of thoughts i'm not sure i'm ready to share um, fair enough fair enough all all I, here's what i'll here's what i'll say about that um akira is someone who had a history with matt tremont 
uh, Matt Tremont is dead. And all that remains is the reigning, defending American deathmatch champion of the world, the Killdozer. If Akira thinks that he is going up against the man that he knew, he'll lose. Right. That, that man is dead. Yeah. Uh, no, I John, I, I want to, you know, maybe talk to you again about uh, uh, a little side deal. Maybe we could call it uh, something else. Um, I don't know. Um, streaming the cross scissors. I, I don't know. You can come up. You, you're the creative genius. You come up with the name for it. I just know that I am the face and the voice that you need. I mean, IWTV. Uh, I co-sign that. I did the, the, the reason figures. why he's a ring announcer and I'm not <laughs> six figures, uh, uh, you know, a, a small, uh, a small one-time payment, uh, in the six figure range is all I would need, John. I mean, you could do a lot with that money. Wanks yeah, with Wanks. Oh one-time. my God. God damn. Yeah, mm. uh, you kind of walk yourself into that. But John, John Connor, you're gonna pay for that one. Here. Connor here, by the way, thank you, Connor. Says Bobby, are you ring announcing Death Summit? I believe that's ICW 61. I believe he means I'll be there. Um uh the answer is yes. I will be your ring announcer for ICW No Holds Barred Volume 61. Uh, the world famous H2O Wrestling Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. It's my favorite place to be. Yeah, since we're talking about that, we might as well bring that up. John, you're going to pay for that, that. That, little, that little wanks with banks thing you did. You're going to pay for that. Nightmares. You're going to have <laughs> the worst nightmares for at least a month. Yeah, all he, all he needs is cruel taking him to hell. That's all he needs. Bust. I, I, I thought we were Bobby. friends. No, Connor. Damn, dude. Come on. We got to be real. Uh, I think Connor went with what along the lines of what John did. But but anyway, so you look at this card. This is a fucking loaded ass card. We got for the American Deathmatch title, Killadozer, Vic Craig, Danny Darko, and Green Phantom. Pruel versus Diamond Cutter. Versus Lou Nixon versus Tank for the IWTV title. You got Shaza McKenzie versus Tara Zepp. Danny DeMancho's World Challenge. Eric Ryan against Yusaku, Yusaku Ito. Hoodfoot against Clint Majera. The Bev against Joel Bateman. And the Pillars against the Kogar brothers. Holy shit! Yeah. So... Aside from aside from Cruel and Tremont, because I know you're looking forward to both of those matches, because you're looking forward to both of them setting their 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 three respective opponents on fire and putting them through all sorts of hell. I so aside from that, that, yeah, that'd be great. Aside from that, what match are you looking forward to the most of the rest of the card? Well, uh, I do want to say, like, if if anyone sees this, I am going to answer this question. So the answer. Yeah. I just feel bad because so the reason why I feel bad about this is that every match on this card could be a main event. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. I, definitely. I think, definitely. I think you just really have to be there. You have to be watching to find out which one it's, it's going to be like, which, which match is going to stand out and, and be that fight of the night. Um, I, I am really, really looking forward to seeing the Bev again. And uh, seeing him go up against former um, American Deathmatch World Champion Joe Bateman is uh, that's going to be special for me. I uh -huh. expect that there will be a lot of blood in that match oh, across the board. Fucking if, buckets. If, if you're attending that match, it doesn't matter if you're in the front row. If you're in the building, you're going to want to bring a jacket uh, or an umbrella or something to, you know, bring keep a face the red mask. Stuff. Yeah. I'll be wearing my white suit. Uh, it's not so white anymore. Um, but <laughs> that's the one that I'm looking forward to. But I just want to say uh, every single match on this card could main event uh, a death match show. So we'll just have to yeah. watch and find out which one is the fight of the night. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot. I I'll be watching. I'll be watching from home. Um, wish I could be there, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, it, just looking at this across the board, I mean, that's I. The one that I feel like I'm the most interested by is Shaza versus Tara. Um, I know Tara. I know the last time she was at ICW, I was. I think it's the last time she was there. She had the, she had that match late last year where you had freaking Mick Foley show up. I think dressed as Santa Claus, aiding and helping her in victory, which is which getting that when you get endorsed by Mick Mother fucking Foley you know you've made it in my opinion I think because Mick is a fucking legend in many different facets whether it's deathmatch or anything of that sort when it comes to his WWE his time in WWE his time helping out in the indies whatever that man's a fucking yeah. legend John Wayne Murdoch likes to fuck around. I, I mentioned earlier, you know, Reed Bentley has a strong addiction to PCP. John, I believe, is addicted to fucking around, and he found out, you know. And uh, Mick Foley told him, told us all, you don't fuck with mittens. Yeah. Yeah. T tell that to Mance Warner, who did that to, to mittens in the front row at GCW a couple weeks back. I watched well, that fucking shit live. That was nuts. And I will oh say that some, some, folks, some folks do have a right to fuck with mittens, like uh, my Ooh. man, my guy, uh, the young lion of the Killionaires Club. Uh, John, he's a good friend of mine, good friend of the family. And I'm talking about John J. Buschenheimer III, J. Bushy. Uh Jay yeah. had a good reason to fuck with Mittens and, and really put him in his place. I've never seen Mittens humbled as as much as Jay Bougie humbled him. Um, but other than other than Jay Bougie, I can't think of anyone who would want to fuck with Mittens, even Mance Warner, and I'm sure Mance will get what's coming to him. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he gets to face Effie in an I Quit match at spring break uh, during the last week. You don't, you don't fuck with Effie. Yeah, no, you don't. And, and and I've seen people write some articles on it. Like this is the last this some are looking at this as the last great blood feud per se. You know, you have Mance turning on not like you have Mance turning on Effie, Ali, Sheik, second gear crew, so Manders, Matthew Justice, though we haven't seen Matthew Justice in GCW in what seems like quite a while. Um Oh, but gosh. you have all of that, just the amount of violence that he's willing to bring, all the things that he's willing to do to get whatever he wants. And remember, he also, he still holds a title shot to the GCW title from throwing Effie over the top rope in the do or die rumble back on New Year's. There's a, there's a scenario where, what at, regardless of what happened between Mance and Effie, I wouldn't be surprised if Matt still cashes in, excuse me, cashes in that title shot when Blake Christian defends the title against Joey Janela in his namesake spring break show. Um, um do you, you ever have like really vivid memories? Like so when, when you, when you mentioned Matthew justice just now, I had this really vivid flashback um of a show i went to it was this was a while ago it was a gcw show in charlotte just the i've never seen someone wield a steel chair like matthew justice right uh, uh, and i just, I just had like question. a really vivid flashback of him smashing somebody over the head with with that chair oh well, yeah i imagine uh to answer your question not entirely i i i don't know I, there have been moments where for some odd reason it feels like a deja vu moment like like i had seen something in a dream sometime and then something like that it, it could just be like something like extremely random and it happens but i can't necessarily say that i've had any like had moments of like vivid flat mind flashbacks and stuff like that 
maybe some maybe someday that that will happen you know where you know whatever the case may be um but yeah it, it's it's very it's very interesting uh just in ge- just in general this whole the whole feud and um you know it, it it's it's probably the best feud going right oh oh, oh shit oh sh- wait what? oh okay i didn't realize you dropped out so i just brought you back but it was uh, must have been an internet issue sorry about that oh no you're good you're good you're good but no all right so i'm not gonna be able to see this in person son of a bitch but it's happening warhorse versus cruel april 4th action wrestling at the h2o wrestling center um that that's the power of cruel right that's the power of cruel working through me through space and time to make beautiful things happen uh i just want to uh express my love for my personal lord and savior the atrocity cruel thank you cruel yeah <laughs> Holy shit, man! As you can see, I'm I'm literally live tweeting this right now. Just broke this news to Bobby on stream. Holy yeah. shit, man! That's, that's what I wanted. Be... That's that's exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna be there front row. Uh, so see you there, Jake. <laughs> John. Well, John, <laughs> you missed it. You fucking missed it earlier. Bobby, you cut. To, you have to You're gonna have back. to go I'm back gonna... and through the stream and watch it. Bobby fucking cut a promo on Warhorse because Warhorse like, dropped a back. promo earlier about Cruel. And yeah. we showed that live on stream. He he opened his damn mouth, and uh, he's and at Action Dean, he's going to get it shut. It's, that's all there is to it. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about John, I'll tell you, the funny thing about that match is Warhorse thinks it's for the belt. I was telling Alan earlier, no, it's for his life. Uh, his life is on the line in that match, and and the fact that he doesn't have enough sense to be afraid of what could happen. Uh, trust me, he too will come to no fear. Yeah, no, I could, I could definitely mm. see it. That is going to be so um, much fun. I cannot wait to see all my friends there. Uh, shout out to Dylan Hales, Dylan, fucking love you. Uh, and I just want to thank Cruel for for blessing me with that news on on the, on the live stream. Thank you, Cruel. <laughs> I will. That's the tweet that got me here, actually. Hey, you love to see it. Um, but yeah, John, no, I it's figures. It's all it takes is a is one lump sum. Uh, could be a hundred thousand dollars flat. I'll take that. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, and a t-shirt because Bobby was ta- talking on Twitter asking if people would buy a t-shirt, and as I said, I would buy a Bobby Bay's t-shirt and wear that shit proudly. Expo fucking viciously. You could drop that shit tomorrow and I'd fucking pre-order that shit. Are you kidding me? You know, like I, I, I think that, Bobby's man. got the fans to where people would buy that shit and buy it in droves and wear it to shows where Bobby is at, you know? Well, uh, I'm in talks uh to produce a shirt. It, it uh one hundred percent of the proceeds from sell the shirt would go back to wrestlers and uh families of wrestlers um i i um you know that's how we sort of connected as i saw you being such a great fan of professional wrestling and uh i always like to do everything i can to give back to uh the thing professional wrestling that has given me so much uh and so i'm thinking about uh dropping a shirt and again 100 percent of the proceeds from the shirt would go to wrestlers and their families um, so John says, "What about ranks with banks? Do your weekly IWTV rankings." Banks. banks. I you mean, know, uh, John, you produce it. All you got to do is pay me one hundred thousand dollars. That's all it is. It's a, that, that is a small fee to pay for this beautiful face. I mean, I feel like a rankings thing would be fun. It would, it would take like I feel like you probably have more time on your hands than I do to watch enough IWTV and watch enough of what would be to rank but i mean if i could find the time and, and watch like i mean hey i'd I fucking join produced, you on that i want it produced by john roy and, and the iwtv geniuses 
Uh, Makes sense. As long as, as, you know, whatever you produce for me, John, I can do it. I am. Yeah. You're, you're looking at a very talented man. Uh, and, and with cruel by my side, the sky is the limit. Yep. Um, and I know this was maybe, an idea thrown around Alan, on Twitter a little bit. Alan, maybe you and I should do a show together. Bob and Alan. Alan and Bob. <laughs> I mean, B.A. Yeah. I, mean, I can I don't see know. it. I mean, hell, I know this was an idea. I I, might, I mentioned this on Twitter, but throwing around. Because IWD, IWTV does the Life of Whomever series. They, they've got the newest one is Owie Catch. But I said... Well, why not just do that with fans? Just do one episode. You do this one episode where you get like, and like, and it wouldn't be like random. It would be like people, I guess, like sort of like well-known fans, sort of kinda. So like, you know, you mittens. I don't want to say I'm well-known because I've only been in wrestling for so long, but I know I'm sure there are others, and just like documenting just like who they are. Their fandoms, who they, you know, you know, their fandoms for wrestlers and sort of like what they do in the daily life. And also just film them being at shows, being with their guys, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I, hey, there's an idea right there. Um, shout out to John Philip Havage. Uh, love the love the life of it's a it's a, a great show. I, I'm looking forward to seeing more installments in the death of. Uh, we saw the premiere with the death of Matt Tremont, but you know, coming yeah. up at Action Dean, we might get the second episode. Uh, <laughs> the death yeah. of Jake Parnell. Yeah, uh, I could let see me that. Assure, let me assure you, Alan, and all those watching around the world, that that death will not come quickly. He will suffer. Yeah, yeah he will. That's and in the that... end, all will burn. Yep. So just remember that if you show up to the H2O Wrestling Center, that might be the last time you have a, an opportunity to, to be there in one of those, uh, I call them the uh, fuck back dime store uh, flea market chairs that they have there at the H2O Wrestling Center. If, yeah. if you sit in one of those chairs for more than two hours, you are guaranteed to lose feeling in your legs. I will remember. I will know that for if I ever get down there someday, I'll just be like, "All right, buying standing room tickets." And, and uh, that's why Chando doesn't wear shoes, uh, is because he can't feel anything. He's been sitting in those chairs, and he's he's lost all feeling in his extremities. You see, uh, that's why people don't people often wonder why Chando doesn't have any shoes on. It's because they're of no use to him. He's lost feeling in his extremities from, due to the effects of those dime store flea market footbacks. It's true. Yeah, that's yeah. Just uh, and this is why I, this is why I was looking so so looking forward to doing this because. Oh shit! Cruel just tweeted. Cruel just tweeted as I, I, I have to, I have to show it on stream. Hold on, hold on. I have to show this on stream because I know Bobby's gonna love this. Show it to him. Alan. Another tortured soul come for the reaping. <laughs> yep. You got damn right. I'll say that myself. That's. Who boy. You know, and as you can see right there, cruel follows me. That 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 seeing that pop up in my notifications the day it happened, I'm like, God damn. Thank you for that. Uh you know? Alan, everywhere you go, he follows you. So just don't forget about that. Well, I won't forget. I mean, Alec Price followed me recently too, so you know. I uh it that's always the craziest thing, I have to say. Just for me personally, the craziest thing is being followed by wrestlers, followed by fucking promotions, you know? Especially promotions like, oh, uh, like and in places like I can't get to right now that I want God, to get to sometimes. I'm about this match now, just thinking about. Dude, you have every fucking right to be. It's your guy defending his title 
against fucking Warhorse. It'd be the same thing if a fucking if an Alec Price match dropped right the fuck now, and it was against somebody that I want Alec to really fucking beat. You know, it'd be well, the exact me, same goddamn thing. Let me just spitball some ideas here for you, Alan. Like, wh what do you Go think ahead, about? So, Action Dean, I've already said I will be front row. Yeah. Um, would you like to see Bobby Banks in the corner? of the atrocity cruel for that match. Oh my God. Seeing, see this, I said it earlier. I, you are the mouthpiece of cruel. If you actually became his, I don't want to say manager per se, because I don't think he needs one, you but can't. if you were you can't manage there, him. if you cut promos for, cause again, you are, you, the promo you cut at Warhorse tonight, you could drop that shit on Twitter. You could have someone tweet that shit out, and it would fucking hit. And Glory to like, Cruel. Damn. Glory to Cruel. Because, you know, Cruel works through me. That 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 is, that is the story of my life. He has taken control of my life. He's my personal Lord and Savior. So everything that I say, every move I make, every step I take, it's because of the atrocity. Uh, so if, if it, if it, if it should come to pass, it would be glory to cruel. I just want to give all the yeah. glory to him. Yeah. I mean, it's better to, I guess in some ways it's better to believe, to, to, to believe in something that you can see. And I mean, look, I got out of religion because I, I work on Sunday mornings and I hate the way it's used to attack people. But when you want to yeah. talk about the religion of cruel, the church of cruel, that's something I can get behind. It's right not there. really a religion, you know. It's not. It's not really. It's just a way of life. It, yeah. It's well. It's 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 not a situation where I had a choice. Again, I saw cruel and was immediately uh, taken hold of uh, by him. Uh, but I'm so thankful that he chose me. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, uh, promoters out there, if if you've if you've always wanted to book the war horse. Uh, Jake Parnell, you're going to want to reach out to him. You're going you're to want to send him an email. Do uh, you remember that email, Alan? He said so something Viking at yahoo.com, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me, let, me, let, me just, let me just verify the email address. Yeah. You mentioned Dylan Hales earlier. He says he quote tweeted Action Wrestling tweeting this match out and says, Call the 60-minute Uta versus Garcia draw in this building on the day the title became an official and uh, at PWI official at official PWI recognized world championship was on the build was on the call in this building when Alex Shelley won it on the call again at Dean but this one man I mean uh, it's Book of Viking at yahoo.com. If you're a promoter out there and you've always wanted to have Jake Parnell on your show, uh, you better get to him before April 4th. Book of Viking at yahoo.com. Pay him his fee. Uh, go ahead and get him on your show because after April 4th, uh, you probably won't be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Donald Holland himself said all will burn on that tweet. Well, um, again, Donald is always right. Said it yourself. Um, and then from IWTV themselves, they said the current world champ versus the longest reigning champion in the title's history. And then from Carmen Michael, I refuse two that. of the most dominating IWTV champions in history. This one right here will be worth well more than the price of admission. Well, Get your tickets now. And if you can't be there in person, go subscribe to IWTV. Well, uh, you know, Jerry, IWTV may think that, you know, War Horse is their longest reigning champion. Uh, Dylan, Dylan might think that. I don't, I don't think, I think Dylan has a, a better perspective on things, but that's because they have an inferior perspective of time. You see, I have seen through Cruel, I have seen past, present, and future all at once. And let me tell you something those belts, that championship, it's ours for. Ever. So you tell me who the longest reigning champion is. Oh, well, I mean, I think what it is is in Cruel's mind, he never lost it originally when he got injured. So 
Tech, so by technicality, and you then could you say that. You want to extend that timeline out forever. Hours. As I long see as it. we want it. I can see it. So, also, so you, you I tell very me well who the longest you. reigning champion is, Jerry. Oh, my God. I could see you literally like being part of Cruel's entrance, walking out with the titles around your shoulder. Like... Him holding one title, you holding the other, or you having both of them around your neck, and then him walking out behind you. Just the fucking, the visuals I can see in my head. <laughs> oh, my God. Alan's I want got that vision. so bad. Alan's, I want that. Alan, you I got want it. That from that's, you. that's a beautiful vision that you have there. I mean, that's just, I, I could definitely see that. Well, Alan, you have single-handedly got me fired up about this match. Like I said before, we don't respect Jake, so I, wa I wasn't really uh, thinking too much about him. Uh, he he's not really, again, you know, he's a he's a plastic puppet uh, of a man, uh, and he doesn't even really know who he is, much less who we are. So I really wasn't thinking that much about him, but you showed me the video. Uh, you, you've got me fired up about it. I can't wait to see him suffer. And he'll find out you, he'll, he'll find out who he is, hopefully, but he sure as hell will find out who we are, and he too will come to no fear. Oh, well, oh, oh yeah, no, I I believe it, dude. I fucking believe it. I mean, again, the only the only question that has to be asked at the end right. of the day was was this all worth it in the end for Warhorse? Was it worth it abandoning who you used to be That's right. to become who you are now. Was it a bit, was it worth it to abandon everything? And was it worth it to, to chase after finally getting this title shot that you felt like you deserved, which don't get me wrong. Right. I think in hindsight, he should have got it a lot sooner than now, but IWTV fucked around, never giving him another shot. After right, it's Jerry's fault. Blame Jerry. So you could say, IWTV created the monster that is Warhorse now because he eventually got desperate. But now he has to go meet the, the you know, there's there's the, there's being a monster and then there's being the atrocity that Cruel is. That's brilliant so, analysis, Alan. I love that. Uh, and I think you've given us a reason to let him stay alive. Uh, I mean, so hey. I think, yeah, I think Warhorse probably has you to thank. For his life now, uh, we'll we'll let him live just so that we can ask him, Jake, was it I worth mean, it? Was well, it worth it? Well, see, that's the question you get asked or that you ponder when before you die. Was it all worth it? That's right. And so for some people it was and for some it wasn't. So the question, so that will be the question. But also, Warhorse might be a masochist. He might say, oh, it was worth it, but I'm still willing to die anyway. So, well, he says I he can't. We'll he says he can't April feel 4th. anything. He, it, it, you know, he says that this this warhorse character, this uh, you know plastic shell of a man, says that he can't feel anything anymore. That he, he has no values whatsoever. And so you can you can look at what we are about to do to him as helping him with that. And and that is the sense in which cruel is a benevolent atrocity. Uh. I could see that because he'll he'll, he'll do gears. a whole lot when we are squeezing the life from his corpse. He'll feel yeah. it. Trust me. Yeah. Switching gears a little bit, real quick. How about this news oh, that's breaking shit. right now? Ah, uh, for the 2024 Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame, Colby Carino is going to get to induct his father, Steve Carino. Word um in the into the indie wrestling hall of fame this Steve year on Sunday, April 7th. That's awesome. I I know you mentioned Carino against Cruel earlier and I'm uh beat Cruel Carino beating Cruel in a last man standing, or I guess you should say surviving because I don't think you no, he won Cruel. the match. Give, give Colby credit where where Colby is due credit. He won the match. Uh Cruel well, yes, was down for out of ten. Yeah. But just but. ask Colby what happened when Cruel got up. <laughs> oh, I imagine. Yeah. But this is cool right here. Um, 
Colby you know, almost I, got I a got punch lung see. from that match, by the way, Alan. Like he, Colby Carino, just he just about had a punctured lung from the damage that we did to him. Damn. But yeah, no, for for Colby to get to induct his dad, I just want to say I think that's really cool. Um, I've seen clips of Steve here and there. I haven't really watched any matches of him. I got to see Colby compete um, against Rocky Romero for the uh, whichever NWA title that Colby currently holds or was holding at the time. That was at Catalyst Wrestling in New York last fall. Hell of a match. Um, and so, you know, I I just I saw that and I figured I'd share that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, that's, that, that, that's awesome for him. And I, oh, you yeah. know, what, you know what you are? You were a fire starter. I, I knew from the moment I met you that you had a fire burning inside you. And, uh, you know, you, you showed me what it, what it really means to be a fan. When I saw you screaming, uh, at Sammy Diaz but you were a fire starter. Now, now the internet is is on fire talking about what is going to happen to Jake Parnell uh, on April fourth at Action Dean at the world famous H two O Wrestling Center, and there are, there are ideas floating around for a number of roles that I may play uh, in, in yeah. the uh, suffering of Jake. So I'm. I mean, I'm really, yeah, like I said, oh my God, just I'm really blessed by that. Yeah. I mean, I I could literally see like Warhorse comes out and then you come out, you cut a promo very similar to the one you did tonight, right to Warhorse's face, and then out comes Cruel. And Cruel just marches the fuck out there, <laughs> gets right in Warhorse's face, and just looks I don't down want to get at hit him. In the head with a baseball bat, Alan. Now let's not uh, hey, 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 hey. I'm sure you I'm sure you can duck pretty pretty quickly. I, I'm sure you can. I I don't think we're hard to like out just they used to be. either way. But, you know, I just, I, I can see that. I just, it, I don't know, man. I just think that, I, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I've, okay, there, so I've, just, just, I've just now seen uh, Cruel has given me a vision, and I have seen the outcome of that match. And I'm happy to sp spoil it for everyone if if you would like me to, Alan. Just, that's up to you. That's up to you, man. I mean, I think we know the outcome. Somebody gonna fucking die. <laughs> well, I I don't know about that. Uh, I, well, maybe I, not die. I really like your idea. Very of, close. Very close. Uh, yeah, I really like your idea of leaving him alive so we can ask him. Yeah, was it worth it? But I, ha I have uh, foreseen the outcome of uh, that match. And still, the real world champion. I've, I've seen it. He, he showed it to me forever. He'll always be the champion. I've seen it. So, uh, I'm sure you have, man. I'm sure you have. I want, I, for this one, I want, I want to see on that one. IWTV Independent Wrestling Champion of the World, The Atrocity. Cruel. And you see why this man's a ring announcer. Bravo. Bra fucking vo. Oh my god damn, dude. Forever. Like I said. Like I said. As long as we want it. Yeah. Yeah. He just, is just, nearly just seven play, foot tall. Inconceivable clip. horror. Just, just you know, to Connor, two kings. I, I'm sure you're referring to him and Cruel, not him and me. I'm sure, but either Man. way, thank you. Alan, but you yeah, no, about? just just roll the Terry Funk <laughs> clip where he just keeps saying forever, over and over. I think that was after what his first retirement. Um, you know, you know the clip I'm talking about. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Alan, you might want to yeah. think about. Asking cruel into your heart is your personal Lord and Savior. I mean, let me see here. Last Friday at Blitz Creek Pro, I thought I was about to have his boot in my face when you got when freaking Bronson speared him off the no. apron on the no. outside. I, I've Jeez. already spoken to him. I've already spoken to him about that. You you will not be harmed by my Lord. Hey, I appreciate it. 
mm-hmm. but no, it, it, it's genuinely nice to like, like seeing Kroll is just, I mean, it's fucking incredible. I mean, you know, and, and I guess there's, you know, there's the, you know, just the cool versus strong. I'll, I'll say that much. Um, you know, as long as we it, want it, I mean, uh, I keep telling, yeah. keep telling people, it seems like there are so many who don't want to hear the truth. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I see, I feel like you can see. Oh my God. What? Richard Holiday is doing air fresheners now for merch. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> like, sorry, that guy's side smart. thing. That guy's that's that's side a thing. smart guy. He's a, he's, yeah. Well, I mean, the they, you know, he says you're breathing rarefied air, so that's, I get it. That's, that's a side thing. Yeah. Um, Oh god, I cannot! Yeah. I cannot wait for this. Yeah, for crazy no, I, freak. hey, he yeah. is death incarnate. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. As I think, uh, I think what could happen is Warhorse gets beaten within an inch of his life. He gets asked if it was worth it. Gets dumped in a body bag. Gets cruel. Takes him back home. Dumps him in the creek and says, "You can go sit. You can go lay there and think about what you've done for a while. And when you're." Ready to accept me? You can come out as long as you survive. It's kind, of, it, it's it's kind of like Taz back in the day, and I forget the first half of his mm-hmm. catchphrase, so I apologize for that. But I remember the second half of it: "Survive if I let you." Um, you know, and it, and it's I I feel that with Cruel. It's you don't win, you survive if he lets you. Otherwise, well, you're fucked. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, you're, you're just you're just ready to go punch a wall or something. You, I am. I am ready, ready to go. go. I'm, I don't I'm blame ready to you. Go. I don't blame you. That that's how you should feel. That's 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 how you should feel about this because the, the you want between Taz. So the so what Taz said back in the day was, "Beat me if you can." Survive if I let you. Uh, so exactly, yeah. The, thing, the, the issue with cruel is there's no beat him if you can. You can't. Yeah. So uh, that's a that's a big difference. Uh, yeah. That makes but, sense but yeah, just to that. just to spoil the outcome of that show, the main event. Sorry, Dylan. Uh, and still, yeah. you're reigning, defending recognized sanctioned and real iwtv independent wrestling world champion forever or as long as he wants it the atrocity cruel i can see it i can definitely see it you know and i mean hey I mean that'll that'll make him that'll make him question should i have lost him should i have allowed mathers this opportunity because uh it would be the same, probably be the same beat down either way. Mather and Mathers is younger than Warhorse, so it oh god. <laughs> One thing I'll say though, the only chance that Warhorse might have in the whole match is is comes from the fact that we don't respect him. We we are underestimating him. We don't expect him to be much of a challenge. Uh, I'll just throw that out there. That is our Achilles heel. You know that is our kryptonite, if you will. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter. All that much, but that, that's just a matter of fact. We don't respect Jake Parnell. Well, I mean, well, that's the thing. Well, you say underestimating can always be an Achilles heel. I wonder that a little bit because go back to Shamrock Slam of Beyond Wrestling back in Boston. Actually, fuck it. Go back to the previous Beyond show. He was supposed to, Cruel was supposed to face Tracy Williams. Williams couldn't make it. So I guess you could say he got lucky. So he has an open challenge. Tyree Taylor comes out, and oh my god, being for there for this match live and in person, I was I'm so jealous of you, Alan. That was inc- that was a hell of a match. Yeah, like, bro, like there's the there's a clip that's on Twitter somewhere where it's like you have it, it's pulled from the show itself at one point and the match where you have I think it's where you have freaking Drew Cordero on commentary, and he's like talking about there being a goddamn car wreck. It feels like Cruel and, and Tyree hit each other. It's like a goddamn car wreck. 
and talk about there being explosions in freaking Worcester from this match. It, that was insane. But then what happens afterward is Tyree, you know, Cruel wins, obviously, as we know. Cruel then, I I think he went to the back. He went and got, I think he went and got the gas can, like he, like, you know, like when Tremont, or sorry, when Kildoja came out with it at the end of Heavy Lies the Crown against Alec. And then out comes Ichiban. And Ichiban, number one, uh, you know, he comes out, he defends Tyree, you know, being part of the Church of Greatness and all that now. And so we go to Shamrock Slam, Ichiban wins the opening battle royal to earn that title shot against Cruel. And then him and Cruel in that match later in the night, yes, Cruel won, but Ichiban gave that man everything he fucking had. He, oh my, like, Ichiban fucking, and it, it shows why he was the first wrestling open champion, because that man, that man can do so many great things in the ring, and there's a reason why Ichiban is so beloved, because, you know, and what he did against Cruel was insane, Cruel, uh, he, you know, Cruel gave him one more choke slam just for good measure afterward. Just to sort of send a reminder, but there was no gas can needed for that one. That was that. I think there's a level of respect between Cruel and Ichiban. There is. I think Cruel yeah. probably after was like Ichiban. You know, he probably told him, you know, you did good. No, but, and that and that last choke slam was a love tap. You know, we we love Ichiban number one. Uh, also, shout out to the Church of Greatness. I did get a chance to visit with Brother Greatness for a, a little bit when I was in. Cambridge recently, and um, we uh, talked a little bit about Tyree. Um, you, you talk about respect. Uh, someone who has uh, Brother Greatness was reminding me that that uh, Tyree's been doing it for a while now. You know, showing up, showing out, uh, wrestling his ass off, and just a phenomenal talent. And you know, for whatever reason, I just hadn't seen it yet, and I saw it in that match with Cruel. Sometimes you you do have to go out there and earn that respect, and Tyree has done that. Um, he yeah, has, yeah, yeah. He has my for respect a, for an sure. impromptu match He's a like that and a superstar. Holy shit. Yeah, Bro. talk about two immovable objects going at each other. That match was. Hold up. I mean, Tyree made that man move in ways I didn't think Cruel could move, and Tyree moved in ways I didn't know. He could fucking move. Like, Tyree, I feel like, is cut from the same cloth as guys like the Big Boss Man and and I maybe and whatever, where he's a bigger guy, but he can fucking move. Holy That's what I'm shit. saying. He can. He can. He can go. He, yeah, he can. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, it's fucking wild. Uh, and I would like... I would like to see Cruel and, and Tyree again someday. I'd like to see that. Um, I, you know, it doesn't matter where it is or what it's for or whatever. I'd like to see Tremont. Uh, Tremont, Jesus Christ. I'd like to see Tyree and Cruel again someday. Um, I'd like to see that. And I'd like you to be there for it because I think you would love it just as much as I did. If it, If the rematch is anything like the original, you would fucking love to see that shit in person. Um, just as much as watching it on IWTV, uh, it, it was fucking lit. Um, but yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just, I, I, cool and war horse, man. That's, that's going to be, it's going to be gonna, nuts. But if you, if you don't have a ticket to that show yet, you need to go. Uh, online and get that ticket now. So I'm telling yeah, you. Right, yeah, if you can get there. And if well, not, again, subscribe make your to plans IWTV. now because if if you decide last minute that you want to show up there, I'm telling you, you might not have a seat. Uh I wish I could, man. But you know that that's a bit of that's a bit of travel for me. I, again, as I said earlier in the show, I wish I lived closer to New Jersey so I could attend a lot of these shows because. While I like what I have up here in, in Mass, and I love 
you know, Blitzkrieg Pro, Beyond Wrestling, Fight Life, Wrestling Open, um, Pro Wrestling Grind, even though I got, you know, I got, to, I haven't been to their home base yet, but I got to see them at a music festival last year in Mass. Um, I'd like to get up to Maine and get to Limitless sometime. Um, you know, but I just fucking New Jersey, man. It's something, you know, as they, as I said earlier, and I was told this last night, everything's legal in New Jersey. So, um, but yeah, it, it's, yeah, <laughs> I'm as excited as you are, man. I, I mean, I think you're more excited. Getting excited. Oh my fuck. So this guy, this random, uh, this guy, this this fan, Peter MacArthur, quote tweeted Warhorse's promo. He says, "Do you want to see a monster? Well, you are looking at one in in Warhorse." And then he says, "And well, he has cruel intentions when he captures the IWTV title. Trust me." Well, Peter, Peter, do I need to send Bobby Banks after you, buddy? Because um. Trust that Warhorse is going to get beaten within an inch of his life. I haven't, I haven't seen the whole match yet. I haven't been shown that by my lord. Uh, just seen the outcome of it, uh, and still, uh, yeah. So, I, I, but so I am excited to see the extent to which uh, a man's body gets tortured and maimed. Um, you know, because Warhorse, you know, does seem to have this attitude about him. You know, he insists that he believes in nothing. Well, it may it may take some pain. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep. Very much so. But yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I, I, bro brother, I am I am ex I am excited about this for you, you know. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I cannot wait. It's going to be a lot of yeah. fun. I'm, I'm, uh, advocating now for, uh, sort of an inverted crucifixion of, of ringside. Like we could set up a, an upside down wrapped in oh barbed wire, right. uh, cross, and so, hang, so basically, the yeah, because the upside again, down the, cross the head is like be... a devil sign. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Just like that. Say, Wrapped in barbed when wire. You cool as death and we'll, yeah, I can see that. And then we'll just take his, take his lifeless body and stick him up on that cross. Stick him up there. And <laughs> and, and the blood will be dripping down. Uh, again, uh, interacting with the oxygen in the room to make that beautiful, uh, beautiful, yeah. dark deep red color that we all love to see so much and the blood will be dripping down and 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 then we'll set the set it on fire and all will burn <laughs> i can't wait alan i'm so excited it's i i'm beautiful i'm happy for you dude because thank you you know like this it the Uh, oh yeah, so that this Harry guy, I just looked under the action wrestling tweet. He he said it best himself. One fueled by hate, one fueled by nihilism, worlds collide. I don't think anybody could necessarily describe that any better. Um, but again, I think we know what's going to happen here. And if any, and if it. Somehow, some way, Warhorse manages to do the unthinkable. That's levels of uh, that's upset levels of like freaking um, UMBC against Virginia in March Madness, Giants against the Patriots in Super Bowl in 07, shit like that. Look, yes, Warhorse is allegedly the longest reigning champion in IWTV history, whatever the books want to say, but. Something of it's just it's a whole cruel is a whole different beast. Doesn't matter if you're a fan or wrestler, you see that. You've seen it. I've seen oh, yeah. it. I you just know? want to give a, a shout out to Harry. I I got to meet him and his dad uh over in the UK. 
um, great fans. You know, we're here because of you, Alan, really. I, I, you, you are the best fan I think I've ever come into contact with. Um, but over there uh, in the UK, they have some great fans too. And um, I, I loved being over there so much because the fans are so good. They're so good at, at being fans and knowing what what their role is to play in the show. And fans, I feel like fans have a very important role to play in the show. Over there, they know. You know, Alan. Um, but uh, I love the folks over there. They're great. Shout out to Harry. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the UK fans, I mean, we, we've seen that whenever WWE or AEW or whomever gets over there. The UK fans are a whole different breed of crazy. Um. You know, they, if in some ways it feels like international fans treat wrestling a whole lot <clears throat> more seriously in terms of fandom than I think American fans do. And maybe that's just a conditioning thing. Maybe that's just a conditioning thing from the top promotion, from the way the top promotions in this country are. But like, you, you just, you see it in a lot of places. It just, it, you can't get away with shit overseas because you know, you fuck up over there, you know, you'll hear about it. You'll hear about it from the fans for sure. Um, you know what I mean? Well, uh, they, 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 they approach it from a perspective of love though. The, the fans over there are phenomenal in the UK for sure. Yeah. What we got coming yeah. up on IWTV soon. Let's, um, let's check out the schedule. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they probably tweeted something. If they haven't yet, they will probably will soon. Looks like the next show is uh, Wrestling Open. That's your show. Well, I mean, I'm not there all the time. I wish I was, but that's like an hour and a half drive for me. Um, but What's going down this Thursday? <clears throat> um, Well, <laughs> IWTV quote tweeted Warhorse said, it's about that time, isn't it? Well, um. But um, for Wrestling Open, uh, I might as well just search them up on the Twitters and uh, and take a look over there. Um, he doesn't present himself as someone deserving of our respect. He does present well, himself as someone that mean, needs some help. And we're going to help him. We're going to help him find himself, and we're going to show him just who we are. Right, yeah. Through um, pain and through fire. Yeah. Um, so we've got Swipe Right, which is Ricky Start uh Starts, Jesus Christ, Ricky Smokes and Brad Baylor oh, I love the smoke against show. Ichiban big, big fan and Tyree Taylor. Sorry, what? Big fan of Ricky Smokes, love the smoke show. Shout out to Ricky. I, I give him shit for that because I'm like, the you're not the real smoke show is Scarlet Bordeaux, who's with Karrion Cross. And speaking of which. If we want to talk, if you want to talk guys on the indies, well, yes, he's in WWE now again, but Karrion Cross as Killer Cross against Cruel. Oh my God. Give, I just, to see Cruel get hit with like a Doomsday Saito from like Cross and Cruel would burn, Cross and Cruel would burn something down. I swear to God. They really would, in my opinion. Um, but swipe right, and then Ichiban and Tyree represent, of course, Ichiban and Tyree representing uh, the Church of Greatness, and then the big shots, Desmond Cole, the big boof, huh? And Pedro Dons oh, against CK oh. and Jade George. I've been uh, trying to get both of those Ichiban matches being beat the clock challenge matches. Um, because wrestling, it says here that wrestling open officials have determined swipe right and the big shots must settle their issues with stipulation matches. To determine who chooses the stamp, both teams will have a beat the clock challenge on Thursday. So that's where that's um, so that's where that's going. Um, some other people have been announced for it. Uh, Brad Hollister and TJ have been announced as being sponsored. Sh this guy, Sean Legacy, who seems to be an international guy, uh, is making his <clears throat> debut here. Is making his open debut coming up this week. So, uh, which is going to be, I think, is going to be interesting. Um, met this one. Oh my god, Gabby Forza against Megan Bain. 
Oh, no the Megasis. Merg. I've heard Versus of her. Megasis. Yeah, we know about Megasis. What the fuck? For you have Megan Bain, who we're just who's waiting who's for, because, who is who's allegedly. Yeah, you know, Bane allegedly is signed to EW, so we're just waiting for whenever she gets there or gets <coughs> over there, whatever. Um, you know, she had she did a I think a stardom run that she's back here in the States on the Indies again. Her at Gnomeberg, G- Gabby Forza, you know, her so young in her career taking on somebody as good as Megan. Oh, oh my god, that that mm. I just hope Megan. I just hope Megan says is ready for the Nomberg spear. Again, we do not acknowledge Goldberg. We acknowledge Nomberg. That's just gonna be. That's gonna be fucking lit. Um, RJ Rude and Rex Lawless got sponsored, so they're gonna be there. Um, I don't know. You said who's who's gonna win that match, Alan, Gabby, or Megan? I, I have a feeling it's probably gonna be Megan. But it's gonna be a hell of a test for both her and Gabby against each other. Um, but yeah, so uh, there, there's some other names um, who are gonna be there: Ali Catch, uh, Channing Thomas. So you know, people that are listed to be there, but just haven't been, haven't had matches announced yet. So, um, you know, just so it, it just looks like another another incredible week of I, of um, of IWTV. Or another incredible week of wrestling open action, as always, because wrestling open every Thursday forever. There's a great, yeah, there's a great show on uh, Friday. St. Louis Anarchy's got Gary J. Cashflow, Ken Broadway. Now, you, now you want to talk about a professional wrestler? That guy is talented as fuck. He's really good. Mm-hmm. Watch, watch that. Thomas Shire versus Ken Broadway. Right. Uh, cash flow can brought he that that cash flow is a champion. I've, right, I've yeah. gotten to know him a little bit just through my affiliation with John J. Bugenheimer the third, also known as J. Bougie. Uh, love working with John, but uh, you know, that's gonna be a good match. And then there's uh, we got. Oh, Derek Neal, Casey Carrington. Oh, that's going to be a hell of a six. Six way. Yeah, yeah. this is a great show here. To, uh, Battle of Spalding 2, St. Louis Anarchy. Yeah. So I figured with Mania Week coming up, we might as well showcase the Mania Week schedule for IWTV Streaming Guy, which, by the way, the glorious Killdozer and Cruel on the front of that. I don't think you could have picked anybody else better to have there on your, your Mania Week guide. It just makes sense. Um, but as you can see, Monday... <laughs> and there you are right there. Thank you for using the approved graphic. All will burn. Yeah, we, I love we, that. That's we, perfect. Uh, had that put together for them, and uh, just it took some time to get, get them to use it, but uh, we finally got them to, to use it. Yeah. But Starts off April first, uh, midnight Eastern, the life of Ali Catch, and then H two O Wrestling Monday Night Death at eight PM Eastern. Then H two O Wrestling Hustle Cup four on Tuesday. Oh, I want to talk about Monday Sean Henderson Night presents Death. Wrestle John, and then Intergender Bonanza Cream Mania on Wednesday oh, third. Oh, um, God. and then shake weight. I can't, I can't get the shake weight out of my mind's eye. What do you mean? He's got that shake weight that he uses. To, uh, it's not just the whipped cream. If it was just the whipped cream, I think I'd be all right. It's the shake weight that really sends me oh. over the edge. Oh, God. You know what I'm talking about, Stan? Styles? No. Oh, I I, I, I've I seen his handle. name pop up, but I haven't. I don't know him. I've never met him. I can't handle the shake weight. Uh, it's uh, I can't handle right. it. And then we have Sean Henderson presents Euphoria on Thursday, followed by another episode of Wrestling Open at eight, and then also at eight o'clock, Action Wrestling Dean, which, as we talked about before, headlined by Cruel versus Warhorse. And then Friday, April fifth, ICW NHB sixty one, 
Thrashylvania on Saturday, followed by Expect the Unexpected, Dra ET ETU versus Dragon Gate, and then Ruthless Pro Miasma. And obviously, you know, with uh, there is just going to be so much wrestling content coming up um, as we turn the, the calendar to April with Mania Week, Collective Week, just everything. Excuse me, what's going on? And Bobby, I'm sure you're going to be everywhere. Me, I don't really have a lot going on for April, aside from taking my dad to Foxborough for Monster Jam, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, so. Grave digger, that's a. You know, as I said earlier, you know, do what you can with your family while you have them, because you never know how long you have with somebody until they're gone. Imagine cruel in like a monster truck. Wouldn't that be cool as fuck? <laughs> oh God. Um I mean cruel, oh cruel driving a uh cruel driving a monster truck like Bigfoot grave digger. <laughs> you know wheel. Good. I like that. Well I mean hey the Indies does have the human monster truck Perry Von Vicious so I'm just saying. <laughs> I and yes, I would like to see Perry go out to the ring and, and monster truck like that before uh, someday. That would be fucking cool as hell. There um, should be like a special cruel edition monster truck. <laughs> I want to talk to my lord about that. We can make that happen. I I could um, see it. Alan uh, before before uh, the end of everything, I, you, you mentioned Monday Night Death. I'm really looking forward to that show as well as the one, uh, the following night, Hustle Cup. Uh, yep. Just want to give a shout out to uh, H2O, Hardcore Hustle Organization. Uh, you know, they they always put on a fun show. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that Monday Night Death show in particular. Right. Kennedy Hardcastle versus Jaden fucking Newman? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, yeah. That's fire. That's that's gonna be fun. That's it's it's a good show. I'm told that Chondo may moonsault, so you're gonna you're gonna want to watch that. Yeah. Show. He may do the moonsault on that one. Um <laughs> and then I believe that the pillars. I don't know if Donald is probably Donald's gone to bed by now. It's his past his bedtime, but his favorite team, the Pillars, are going up against one of my favorite, my my personal favorite teams in all of tag team wrestling, Christian Ross and Chris Bradley. Yeah, yeah. They they got to end their best of seven series at ICW 60. Um, mm -hmm. they're back to working together. Uh, which hey, you know, some you know. As a good friend once told me, brothers brothers make magic when they have when they're faced to fight each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I saw that with Dustin Waller and Kyle on King last night. I didn't you know can say the same thing. about that with guys like Alec Price and Jordan Oliver, Jordan Oliver and Griffin McCoy. Um, so I've Sherrod, definitely gotta, I'm Bradley. gonna be at this show. I was I was undecided about like if I could make the Monday night show, but I've got to be there. They've got the bloodbath behemoth tank uh -huh. with the Reverend Dan Wilson. Again, we love you, Dan. Big, big miscommunication on my part. Please don't wear my skin as your suit. We've got tank uh -huh. versus low life legend, low life, Louis Ramos. That's going to be a hell of a fight. I hope, uh, well, we'll see what Louis brings to the ring with him, but. Tank maybe yeah. fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking at like the Miasma show uh on the seventh. Look at so these you got Judge Joe Joe Dredd against listed as Matt Tremont, Typhoon of Light Tubes match. What? They can list him as whatever they want to. Oh, I know. I'm just saying that that's holy shit. Um you got Remington Rock against Vic Craig Kamikaze oh, Championship. The uh, Will 440 accept Midwest Gums Challenge. 
uh, for a match. You got Co- Atticus Kogar against Jake Chris for the RPW Heavyweight Championship. That's going to be a good match. Red Light District Death Match. Schwartzy and Randy West. My man, Schwartzy. I cannot against, wait to see him. He is he against is a, Low Life Louie and Doctor Redacted. Yeah. Oh Lord, that's going to be then, uh, a clusterfuck. <laughs> what else is going to be a clusterfuck is RPW Rust Belt Championship. Tommy Vendetta versus Otis Kogar versus mm. Lou Nixon versus Hoodfoot. Vendetta walking in as the champion. Uh, Atticus Kogar is the current RPW heavyweight champion. Um, uh, hold on a second. Remington Roar is the Kamikaze champion. And uh, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> that, uh, that's wild. That is wild. I'm a big fan of Lou Nixon, by the way. Right. Um, the reigning, defending, rise, European deathmatch champion, Big Lou Nixon! <laughs> Again, people, this is why this man is a fucking ring answer. Just, you, you have it your voice is built for this. Your voice is built for ring announcing. I think your voice could be built is built for commentary, cutting promos, and cutting promos with the vindication, the vindiction, the 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 tone that's needed, especially being alongside someone like Cruel or even somebody like uh, Killdozer. Um, you get the I point across really, very, really very, very promo. well. I don't really cut promos, Alan. I speak truth. I, what do you mean? You fucking caught one tonight. No. You caught one on this damn channel. Just, I open my mouth and out comes the truth. Uh, hey, yeah, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, buddy. You know? You um, didn't get me fired up about Jake. Um... <laughs> yeah, well. Well, thank um, you. I just want to thank you so much for having me on. This has been a lot of fun for me. Um, oh, believe me, dude. It, the the honor the the honor is mine. Uh, the honor is yours. Uh, hey, I'm glad to have you on here. Um, you know, and I, I don't think this will be the last time we do something like this. Hopefully, uh, this is something that I, I said going into this year. I wanted to do interviews with people, or try to at least. So, you know, again, you know, we had freaking John Roy and Donald Holland in here. If either one of you two, if either one of you two ever want to freaking do an interview with me or or really just a stream where we just shoot the shit and just talk about stuff and I ask questions, whatever, hit me up in the DMs. You know where to find me, um, you know, and anybody else, fan, wrestler, whatever. Um, Watch out you know. John Roy. They say he's got robot hands. <laughs> yeah, but his hands, ain't, yeah, he might have robot hands, but they're not as strong as Cruel's, I'm sure. That doesn't even take that doesn't even take somebody's arm and crop by him. You know, with that robot one. hands. Yeah. Just watch yourself around John Roy. <laughs> John's still here. Easy on the hands. God damn. He's like, the fuck you talking oh, about? Oh god. <clears throat> I need, we need to turn the camera off before I start to blush. Ah. Well, we have almost hit three hours, so I think now is about a good time to call it a stream. So once it's been again, a, it's been a I would like three to hour thank... tour with you. <laughs> Gilligan's Island reference, I love it. But it's been an honor to have the man, the myth. The legend, your ring announcer for ICW NHB, your ring announcer for ETU Wrestling at Unlock the Unexpected on April 6th. And you can find him nine times out of ten, wherever the fuck Cruel might be. The man, Bobby fucking Banks. It's an honor, it's a privilege, and uh, I can't wait to see you again someday. Whenever that day may be, wherever that, wherever we may cross paths, you know. 
whenever I see Cruel around, I'll let you know what's going on, you know, in case you can't watch. Or if you can, who knows? And, uh, yeah. I can't so, wait to see you again, too, Alan. It's It's been a pleasure. Uh, I just want to end it on um, All Will Burn. you damn right. <laughs> so that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Follow him. Follow me. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. Peace.